Hello. How's it going, everyone? Uh, da, da, da. So tonight we are playing Genshin with the Aritaki Blazing Armor Beetle Battle Boot Camp. Why the fuck is his name so long? Ito, I love you, boy, but come on. Oh, it would help if I go to the quest. Oh. <laughs> Can't go to uh, Liyue without representing with Hu Tao. <laughs> Oops. Cookie! I was trying to show my Who Raven, my Who Low emotes that I used to have as myself, but Traveler, I moved them over. Paimon, you're here too? Why do you sound different? Yangfei sounds different. Yangfei, I'm here for some hot pot, huh? What's the occasion? No, it's nothing like that. Wanmin restaurants just closed for a couple of days, but it's nice to try somewhere different for a change. Su Arnyang's hot pot is pretty good, and you can't get it at Wanmin restaurant. Wanmin's closed? Why? What happened? Well, it was partly our fault. Oh no! What did Ido do? Recently, some old classmates from the Tongwen Academy got in touch and said they were organizing a get together. Yenfei's the most senior among us, since she's the most qualified. So she got to pick the location, and she booked Wanmin Restaurant. The turnout was a lot higher than expected, and in the space of two days, we somehow got through all of the restaurant's stock for the week ahead. <sighs> Boss's enormous appetite was also a significant contributing factor. He went a little crazy. Chef Mao was pretty wiped out by the end, but he had a huge smile on his face. <laughs> it was the best business he's had in months. Uh, so, okay, he didn't, like, just wreck the place. He just ate it out of food and all. The only thing is, it'll take him at least a couple days to fully restock. Bull Chucker's here, too? Oh, Paimon's surprised we haven't seen him. Those horns stick out like two swords of... Yeah, when he heard I was meeting up with some old classmates, he got very excited and decided he was coming with me. His logic was, and I quote... Any classmate of Shinobu's <laughs> is a classmate of mine. Ah, <laughs> uh, never change, Ido. Notwithstanding the fact that Boss has never studied a day in his life, I think he just feels that he didn't get enough chances to indulge his taste buds last time he was in Liyue. Yeah, that... Uh, like, for that Shao event, fucking hell. I'm still sad players can't experience that because, like, it had such good story elements and lore and stuff. I really think Hoyo needs to make it to where, like, they can play those events just like the story bits, but, like, release them as chapters. Like, you don't get, like, the full shop experience or the stuff you get, like, but you get, like, a couple primos, like, maybe just, like, 40, 30, or something there. What was his name again? Oh, yeah. Grandmaster Hanakado. He seems like a smart cookie. You probably didn't notice because you were busy chatting to your classmates at the time, but he was helping Chef Mao out in the kitchen. Uh, trying to pick up some uh, liwe cook. I suspect he just wanted to learn how to make some new dishes to feed to his own Ikabuto and make them stronger. Grandmaster Hanakado? Uh, where do we know that name from? Oh, yeah! Didn't we meet him during that- That's right. Good memory, Paimon. <laughs> After the near catastrophe that was Shimmy. the Beetle Brawl, Hanakado became an ally of the Arataki gang. He and Boss regularly hang out to have practice matches and discuss Oni Kabuto rearing strategies. Nice, nice. Yeah, Dan, I am like having such a good day. Like, I'm gonna probably be burping a lot in this stream and I'm really sorry if I do. It's cause, wait, did my game not refresh its category? Okay, no it did. It just wasn't showing it in OBS. I had to refresh it, sorry. Um. <laughs> It's because like when my dad, like when I was coming home from work, my dad's just like, hey, I made wings. And I think it was funny because um, <laughs> my, when my mom told me, because I call her to let her know I'm on my way home, they'll just let her know where I'm going. 
coming from. And she just like told my dad she hurt because she told me he made wings. And apparently I lit up and I was just like, ooh, like I got so excited. She could he she said, and I quote, I could hear the smile through the phone. And I'm like, wings, I haven't had in so long. To his credit, a lot of the things he ropes boss into doing in the name of beetle brawling actually result in boss doing some real work for a change. It's made things a lot easier for me. Hey. For instance, they've decided to spend a few days helping Chef Mao restock the kitchen. Partly to thank him for the epic feast, and partly because they would like to use the opportunity to look for new ingredients to boost their Onikabu to- I think they're out looking for crabs at Guyun Stone Forest right now, with Miss Shangling and Mr. Guo. They all seem to get along great. Guova's already made friends with Crimson Staff, as Ito calls it, and, uh, something something Beetle King, or whatever Hanakados. They've been out for quite a while, though. Shouldn't they be- Unless something put them in a playful mood? In which case, it's anyone's guess what kind of mess- Well, now Paimon <laughs> wants to join in the crafts from Glee and Stone Forest? Mmm, Paimon bets they taste great! Crabs do sound good. The sooner one mean restaurant is fully stocked, the sooner we get to eat. And while we're at it, we can see what Bullchucker and Grandmaster Hanakado are really up to over there. So you two are gonna head over? I think that's a great idea. The Traveler, Paimon, and Ito make a good team. Not everyone can get through to him. You make a good point. Well, thanks for checking. No problem. Anything for you, Shinobu. Uh. Oh, that's how I was going to like, I'll run there. It's like, oh, wait, no, I will not. That is quite a run. Oh, Lord. Oh, man, I I don't know about y'all, but I'm having a great day. Like, not only did my shift go quick, um, and tomorrow is my Friday, but I got... I got actually a good amount of sleep last night, which I feel like I haven't been getting for a while because I keep doing stuff and staying up too late. And my coworker um, told me she's just like she she told me it's just that I look like I've been slimming down a lot, and I'm happy because I'm trying to. And it's like yes, that made my day. That made my day. And I didn't have to deal with bitch Magoo when I first came into the shift because like. Why aren't you here at 10 o'clock? Because I'm like, because I need to clock in at 10 o'clock. I don't need to be at my station at 10 o'clock, you fat bitch. But I digress. Oh, and there's nothing wrong with being large. I just call all her a fat bitch because she is large and a bitch and I hate her. And I don't know what else to call her and it just rolls out the tongue. So I hope that does not upset anyone because there's nothing wrong with being big. You can be big and beautiful, but she's not beautiful and she makes it everyone else's fucking problem. Gotta love it. Ah, I see it now. A hard shell, a whole bunch of legs, looks like a born warrior. The crab is the Onikabuto of the sea. Throw one of these bad boys in the ring and your Onikabuto will have to seriously up its game. Oh my god, Ito, that's not that's how that works. Right, Oni King. Technically, the crab belongs to a different species, but it has all the qualities of the perfect warrior beetle. Pitting Onikabuto against crabs during their training is a surefire way to rapidly improve their strength. Uh. <laughs> and it's time for Crimson Staff and Ironclad Beetle King to train harder than ever before. <laughs> Quoba! No rest until they flipped every crab in the area onto its back. Um, Chang Ling. I, I, <laughs> I like Chang Ling. Don't get me wrong, but I love Guoba. If there's ever a Guoba plushie, I am buying it. I, I do not care. Done, we'll just need to stoop down and scoop them up. No more chasing crabs all over the beach. And like, and, and it better be like, like the life size version and be super squishy and huggable. Like a squish melon, soft and squishy. Nah, 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 nah. Oh, uh, Guoba, you're Looks so like cute. Ling and Guoba are part of the gang now. Uh huh. Traveler Paimon, fancy meeting you here. Are you guys help? Hey, Xiangling. Hey, Guoba. Well, 
We were going to gorge ourselves at one mean restaurant, but then we ran into Yanfei and Shinobu, who told us you were closed for a few days. So we figured we'd come find you guys and see if you needed any help. Aw, you guys. <laughs> Thanks for being such loyal customers. With Mr. Ito and the Grandmaster helping me for the last couple of days, we've actually got most of the things we need now. And Crimson Staff and Ironclad Beetle King will be able to round them up for us in no time. If everything goes to plan. And it does not, cause... Uh oh I may have spoken too soon. Do a barrel roll. Oh, no, 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 no. Beyblade, Beyblade, let her rip. Hold on, stay calm. I'll assess the situation. Hmm. Hard shell? Check. Legs? Not too many. But it more than makes up for that with the whole rolling thing. Yeah, looks like a mean fight. Uh, <clears throat> Are they serious right now? Wait, Fucking. I think I recognize that. It's always rolling around on a nearby island. It's made quite a reputation for itself as far as Guyun Jiu bishops go. People have taken to calling it Crystal Tornado. It's because if you ever set foot on its little island, then it whooshes over and gives you a nasty whack on the- How did you come to learn that? She got decked in the face. Okay. Allow me to send in the troops. Go, Ironclad Beetle King! Test your challenger to- <laughs> What is this, a Digimon battle? Uh, Ironclad- oh, One hit and it's all over? I don't believe it. That, 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 that's not possible. It's a beetle versus a fucking geo dinosaur. What do you mean you don't believe okay. it? Listen up, Grandmaster. The glorified pet rock is clearly tougher than it looks. Time to show it what we're really. From what I've seen, our opponent has a lot of brute force, but no finesse. Lugging all that weight around is a recipe for crude and clumsy attacks. And if you don't land the hit, it ain't worth squat. Luckily for us, our Oni Kabuto have a little thing called agility on. Go, Crimson Staff! Dodge the limbs and tail, wait for an opening, and aim for the. <laughs> Actually, seeing this thing, it does look like a Digimon. Uh, belly. Oni King. Uh, I, I will. You... Wait, what's Goba doing? Wait, the <laughs> bishop can understand Guoba? Huh. Just so, to answer your question from a moment ago, I found out about Crystal Tornado's aggressive tendencies the last time we came to gather crabs in Guyon Stone Forest. Tornado gave Guoba a big old bash on the head the moment he saw him. But then Tornado fell unconscious, and apparently wasn't seen for weeks afterwards. I guess he's finally <laughs> recovered from his- Man, what a cool guy. I mean, I figured he was a pretty epic dude just from the look of him, but uh, I've never seen someone just- There's only one possible conclusion. This is a warrior with strength, the likes of which I've never seen before. Oh my god, Ito. I must you say, silly. I concur. I don't know how, but Guoba son simply commanded that hard shell beast to stand down and retreat at once. Come to think of it, he seems like a pro at catching crabs, too. Hmm. Guoba son clearly has some sort of power that lets him bend the minds of shelled organisms to his will. Uh, I think you're overthinking it. <gasps> That's it. The truth has been hiding in plain sight all this time. Guoba-san is a virtuoso beetle battler. With his skills, he can direct an Oni Kabuto's each and every move. I mean, he is the former stove gob, but... Gob? Gob? I meant god, but... <laughs> Guoba can't control shell things. He's like, the fuck? <laughs> huh? oh, of course. Yeah, that makes total sense. <laughs> These are the kind of brainwaves that make you the Arataki Gang's greatest ally. Oh my god. See, if we can get Guobasan to teach us the art of shelled organism mind control, we'll be unstoppable. The entire beetle fighting world will be our oyster. I I love Traveler's face here, because like dude, he doesn't have that. <laughs> can we stop discussing what special powers Guoba may or may not have? 
We have to get these crabs back before too long or they'll go bad. And then... Right. Get a move on, Ball Checker. Shinobu's waiting for you. Also, we want to eat. Huh? <laughs> wait, wait. When did we get two new people? Oh, compadre! <laughs> if it isn't the Yoni King's right hand. Oh, and of course, the flying lavender... Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Sky cleaving white iron lab. Wait. Oh, man. Don't tell me you saw me lose that beetle fight just now. Oh, so oh come on. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Oni Kabuto don't stand a chance against the Geo Bishop Hatchling. Next time, just give it a couple of whacks with your club. But that would defeat the whole purpose. Uh, let me explain. Now, it's no secret that you've kicked a fair share of butt in your time. And from what I hear, that includes some of the biggest, most powerful, and meanest butt around. Yes. I kicked the shit out of a god. So how'd you do it, huh? Were you born stronger than your most fearsome foe? No! Do you rock up to every fight believing that your odds of winning are 100%? Of course not! Dude. Why have... You start with an okay, I wouldn't let me do anything. Defeating the unbeatable enemy, and then you do whatever you gotta do to achieve it. Because even you can't know how much potential you have until you push yourself past your limits. That's how you make yourself not just stronger, but stronger than you ever imagined you could be. Um, and why am I getting plus ultra vibes? Like, is he trying to, <laughs> to get the beetle to go be? <laughs> flee the fight once, you'll probably flee the next time. And the time after that, next thing you know, you're that boring little twerp who never had the guts to put himself out there. Because when you flee the fight, all you're really running away from... Uh, what's gotten into Bullchucker? He actually said something that made sense. For once, Paimon has nothing to argue back. The world is ending. <laughs> Ito <laughs> has left everyone speechless without arguments. You hear that? Boba's getting hungry. Crystal Tornado's gone now anyway, and you're only... So, are you just gonna stand here? Chef Sama makes a good point. Chef Sama? You're still far from being worthy enough to seek the tutelage of the mighty sensei, Guoba-san. Man. Ah, oh, he's so cute! I want a plushie. I've heard tell of a great contest of fine warriors that was once held in this place. We stand on hollowed ground, and the very air we breathe is a- I say we set up a ring here and now. I shall summon the mightiest beetle battlers of Liyue, and as iron sharpens iron, we will hone our skills and training with them. Then, and only then, once we have learned his ways, we will track down that shelled beast and do battle against- Paimon's got a... well, a feeling about this, but not actually sure if it's a good- Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 I'm with you, Grandmaster. Yeah, you're saying the time has come. This is the moment. It's time for the long-awaited Arataki Blazing Armor Beetle Battle Boot Camp. That's right. <laughs> There's no time to lose, Oni King. Let's set up the arena. Damn. The fucking hey, Team Rocket hey, run. We weren't done talking to you yet. Oh, unbelievable. Look at them. Not a care in the world. What did they say it was called again? The Arataki... something something? Anyway, some sort of beetle fighting tournament, right? I think the yes. model might have mentioned it before. If I wasn't so busy with work at the restaurant, I'd love to take Woba along and watch. But right now, the top priority is dealing with all these fresh crabs. Come on, let Shinobu was saying the Arataki gang came to Liyue for her classmates' reunion, right? Or throwing an impromptu beetle fighting competition and interfere with their plans? Uh, well, not much we can do about it except head back to one mean We must inform Shinobu. Whee! Oh, da 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 Guoba, Shangling, Traveler, and Paimon. Uh, wait, where are the other two? <sighs> Let me guess. Ito and Hanakato are up to their you. We'll fill you in shortly. First, I need to get all these pristine ingredients safely stored away. The Miss Flower Corollas won't keep the crabs cool for much. Plus, the Traveler and Paimon are valued customers, eagerly awaiting a grand feast. I'll get cooking. Then we can... 
I, I want food. Even though I just ate like two plates worth of wings that my dad made a little ago. Arataki Blazing Armor Beetle Battle Boot Camp? <sighs> that doesn't bode well. Won't be long. We're guests here, which means we're supposed to be on our best behavior. Leave them to me. I'll put a stop. Mm, I don't know. I think it could be fun. Anyway, don't stress. Beetle fighting sounds like a great event idea. According to the comprehensive compendium of Li Hui Law, we just need to notify the relevant office of the Ministry of Civil Affairs, and they'll issue a permit pretty much right away. You never know. Maybe you'll make some new friends with this event. Then you'll have even more people to hang out with when you next come to- Yeah, and you can bring them all to Wanmin Restaurant for your meals. <laughs> Goba. Goba boosts serotonin. Can confirm. And now you're already planning our next trip? Uh, given the Arataki gang's financial situation- Ah, oh, come on. You gotta learn to cut loose more. You came all this way. You should be focused on catching up with old friends, making some new ones, and just- Generally hanging out and doing lots of fun stuff. I need to be at the Ministry of Civil Affairs shortly for something else anyway. So I can get the ball rolling for Ito's thing. All right. I'll handle that while you guys head back to Ito and help get the venue set up. I'll join you later and bring the permit with <laughs> Leave it to Yanfei, our anime lawyer, to take care of things. Yanfei is in a good mood today. She didn't take any persuading to help out well. Event planning's right up her alley. She was an officiator in the Masterful Chefs Contest, and she has a lot of contacts because of her work. She's also on vacation at the moment, and her old friend Shinobu's in town. That's definitely... Well, I've missed my chance to discuss the issue of our funds. Guess I've got no choice but to deal with Boss directly, Traveler, Paimon. Thanks for all your help so far. I promise... Uh... You mean you don't need us to come? Well, if Ito's serious about defeating that Geo Bishop hatchling with Oni Kabuto, Paimon's kind of curious to see how everything. Now that you mention it, didn't you help boss out a lot at the last one of these? The Almighty Arataki Extraordinary and Exhilarating Extreme Beetle Brawl? Oh, yes. We didn't really help out. We just played a few matches. But it was. A <laughs> Either way, it sounds like you understand boss's perspective far better than I do, so. Maybe you'll be able to help me talk some sense into him. I'll take all the- Sure, or, uh, you know, maybe we could just let him go ahead with it. I mean, yeah. Thank God they added a teleport. All right, boss. Fun time in Liyue is over. Shinobu! I, I can explain. No, you can't. Our funds have run out. We've spent too long here. After buying our tickets for the boat home, the gang fund is down to double digits. How can we possibly afford to hold a tournament? Yenfei Senpai very kindly offered to handle the legalities. Otherwise, you wouldn't even have a permit. Are you expecting her to foot the bill as well? Put a stop to this now. But, but... You don't understand. We have a situation here. Normally, I'm happy to do things your way, but the Arataki Gang's two top Onikabuto warriors just lost to some pet rock. Look, we have a whole arena set up and everything. If we back out now, we'll be the laughing stock of the entire beetle fight. You've lost plenty of beetle fights before. Even I can beat you, and I'm not even a serious player. Why are you so bothered about losing to some bishop? Oh, Shinobu! That was a low blow. <laughs> anyway, that's ancient history. I'm on a whole different level now. There isn't a single beetle fighter out there who can touch me. I'm serious about beating that pet rock. Don't think I've got what it takes? <laughs> and try me. Gladly. You want to do this the hard way? We'll do it the Grandmaster Hanakato. Get me and boss a beetle each. Maybe he'll be more amenable to reason after a crushing defeat. If I win, you have to come back with me. No complaining, and no making any more trouble for Yenfei Senpai. Uh, Shinobu! Oni King! You're really doing this, huh? I, uh, didn't think you'd take it this far. Okay, uh, so, sky cleaving white iron lavender melon, I delegate this challenge to you. You're making Paimon fight me? <laughs> no surprises there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what Bob Checker is really saying is if you want to fight the Oni King, 
You have to go through Sky Cleating White Iron Lavender Melon first. Exactamundo, amigo. <laughs> Sky Cleating White Iron Lavender Melon is one of the Arataki gang's top beetle fighters, but even she isn't in the same league as moi. So, Shinobu, if you want to duel with the Don, you gotta beat the Melon. Except. Paimon uh, refuses. What? <laughs> even Paimon knows that you can't just expect other people to pick up your slack all the time. It's not right. So if you're out of Mora, then tough luck. You gotta watch your sending. If True. Paimon helps you out, that'll just make more trouble for Yanfei, and then Shinobu will owe her a favor. Okay. True. You make a fair, but it's all good. I have a backup plan for si If we really are out of funds, then uh, I'll find a job. I'll work nights, do beetle fighting during the day, pay any expenses out of my own. It'll work. The Grandmaster has helped me find a few good gigs before. As long as it's physical work and the pay is good. Now you're talking. See, that's the kind of attitude Paimon can get behind. <sighs> I can't believe your plan is all well and good, and I do hope you try not to be a burden on other people. But you still need to beat me. I know what Boss is trying to do. He's making me fight Paimon first to use up my Onikabuto stamina. <laughs> well, good luck with that. Even with a disadvantage, I'm still not going to make this easy for you. I forgot how to play this. What the fuck? Yo. I lost. I can't believe it. That. That was so tense. Shinobu nearly got the better of time on there. Hey, hey! <laughs> <laughs> Sky cleaving white iron lavender melon destroys Shinobu on the first attempt. Oh, <laughs> you really are natural at this, aren't you? Yes, perhaps, maybe. As agreed, we now have Shinobu's official support to host the. <sighs> I haven't battled in ages. Guess I'm out. Of... <sighs> I'll have to move to Plan B. Try to keep costs to a minimum, and make sure Yenfei Senpai doesn't end up doing everything for. I'm gonna hold you to your word, boss. Fund this event yourself by working nights. Battle beetles all you want during the... And one other thing. Our boat tickets home were booked well in advance. I can amend the date, but only by a few days. So keep this event to maybe four or five other people tops, or you'll run out of time, okay? Don't... Got it. Sure, promise. Cross my heart and hope to die. Shinobu, you... Okay, I'll head down to the harbor and see about changing the tickets. I'm warning you, you'd better not go spending all our more. <laughs> okay, so we've only got five battles to get in shape enough for Guobasan. Then we gotta master what he teaches us, then take down that cocky pet rock. Shinobu is asking us to do the impossible here. But this is the kind of hardcore challenge I live for. <laughs> Don't worry, Oni King. <laughs> I'll find people to join us in our great training endeavor. So long as there are worthy beetle battlers to be found, I'll be sure to sense their presence and bring- We haven't been in Liyue for long, but I'm certain that this vast land is filled with mighty warriors. We'll have now. As for the esteemed Oni King's right hand and honorable sky-cleaving white iron lavender man- <laughs> we've done our part. We saved your butts by getting Shinobu to agree to this. Paimon saw the look of sheer terror on your faces. You're clearly no match for her. Oh. Well, of course. <laughs> I, in the meantime, if the Oni King's right hand and sky cleaving wide iron lavender melon don't have other plans, then prepare to watch his. Because in a few short days, I, the bona fide Beetle Battle King, will raise my game to new heights, win the respect of Guobasan, and become a living legend. Booyah! Cool. <laughs> yeah, we'll be watching. So, uh, <laughs> no pressure or anything, but. If you mess this up and everyone completely wipes the floor with you, we'll see the whole thing. What's with Paimon's voice in this cutscene? It's all weird.
I like how it's different animations for him. Hello. It's time to fight. I am Iron Tongue Tien, here with an official signboard for the Arataki Blazing Armor Beetle Battle Boot Camp. It also doubles as your permit to. Whoa! Is this supposed to be Bull Checker and Crimson Staff? It's so over the top. Uh. Oh, sweet! Sadly, it's not my own original artwork, but check out that design! And that line, it's so cool! <laughs> it's epic! It captures exactly how awesome I look as a pro beetle fighter. Dude! Wait, not that. Uh, how do they usually address strangers in this pro- uh, Maybe... Esquire? It's definitely not Esquire. Uh, that's the one. TN Esquire. Your artwork is incredible. You can drop the Esquire, Don Arataki. Also, I'm no artist, just a story. This promotional artwork was done by a young lady at the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Yenfei looks out for her a lot. So when she heard about your event, she offered- Oh, so this is Yenfei's doing. Man, she really thought of everything. This is exactly what we needed. <laughs> Young Grandmaster Hanakado here tells me that your boot camp is an ambitious training program that could shape the future of beetle... Well, I'm no beetle fighter myself, but I've heard a lot. <laughs> Who knows? It might just give me the inspiration for a great... Beetle fighting is something you have to have a natural affinity for. Take Sky Cleaving White Iron Lavender Melon, for instance. She battled with great prowess on her first time. Once Tien Esquire has grasped the basics of beetle fighting and understands the appeal, we might get a lot of free- Dude, ah, uh, that'd be awesome. All right, Squirt. Uh, Squat. Yeah, yeah, Squire. Yeah, Esquire. <laughs> uh, me, me. <laughs> I hope I don't have to do all three. Oh. Oh, I fucked up. Oh. I can see that the Arataki gang has transformed beetle fighting into a fiercely competitive high adrenaline sport. Yes, there are the rudiments of a fine tale here to be told time and again. Uh, it's just beetles beating the shit out of each other. <laughs> Great dueling with you, TN Esquire. The pleasure was all right. The phrase is, the pleasure is all mine, Oni King. <laughs> Details, Schmeetails. Point is, Shmeetails. thank you for supporting our boot. I extend my gratitude to you too, Don Arataki. I intend to stay here and watch a while longer to further enrich my writing. Uh, please, pay no regard. Man, I've never fought against someone so cultured before. My mind's buzzing from all those fancy words. What's that buzzy feeling called again? Oh yeah, learning. <laughs> you get a buzzy feeling when you're Looks learning. Like the Arataki Blazing Armor Beetle Battle Boot Camp is getting off to a good start. Oh lord. Let's see.
Bum, bum, bum. You don't, little shit. Come on. I don't know. Let's like beat the shit out of you. Headbutt, headbutt. Oh, I didn't notice this little art here in the corner. Buttercup of Terror? Pony <laughs> <laughs> Kabuto are our friends. Like cats. Another kid? Oh, didn't we go through this? Well, yeah, but Grandmaster Hanakado's a kid too. And one of the other kids from last time was actually pretty good, so age is no measure of a beetle fighter's skill. Although, uh, Buttercup of Terror has no prior beetle battling experience. Her chosen Onikabuto has the air- I don't know what you guys are talking- My Onikabuto was a present from Daddy. He got it from a new friend he made last- Oh, oh. you're f Okay, let's send out Sky Cleaving White Iron Lavender Melon for this one. We don't want any accusations of bullying- <gasps> You make it sound like Paimon's the weakest choice on our side! Still, Paimon's probably the safest choice. But only because you two maniacs are a danger to yourselves and others when you're in a competitive... Don't be nervous, young lady. It's only a game, so it's just... No, Paimon's sweet. Use the Gar button to consume some stamina and form a shield against hostile electro bullets. Your Use guard right before an electro bullet hits to bounce it back. Okay. So I got a full counter this shit. Counter. Do it again. <laughs> Let me do the hardest difficulty. I nearly that up. Uh, oh, I nearly died of a heart attack. That little beastie is fierce. Even I would have had a hard time. Bruh, she didn't even hit me once. What do you mean? How did you get so freaking good at this without a teacher? Is everyone in Liyue a born warrior? So, this is how Oni Kabuto play together? Uh, do you have time to play some more? And looks like Buttercup of Terror has a real knack for this. Oh, kind of terrifying. Maybe that's why she's called Buttercup of Terror. I still can't get over that name. <laughs> if you had this kind of talent, you could probably have learned how to communicate with shelled creatures just by listening to Goba talk to Chris. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I wish. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it shoots two. Bitch. Oh. You shoot three this time? <laughs> Fucker shot three bullets. <laughs> I was like, no. Yeah, 
on faith. Hey there, I'm back. So then, how's the Arataki Blazing Armor Beetle Battle Boot Camp coming along? Great timing, Yanfei. My savior! Oh, thanks for helping out with the permit. Yo, and for the sign with the epic artwork. Wait, True. I know that look. Are you, uh, looking up? Huh? Something wrong with... I have a big client who does a lot of cross-border commerce. Anyway, she showered me with gifts once after I helped her win a huge lawsuit. And among them was a very special Onikabuto. I didn't know how to look after it at the time, so I got Granny to look after it for a while. It's looking pretty buff these days. <laughs> Mind if I join in? You're not worried I'll cramp your style, are you? No, you're perfect. You ought not dismiss your savior, Oni King. What she lacks in experience, she makes up for with one of the sturdiest built and most on- You make me an offer, I All right, time to send in the Oni King's right hand with Crimson Staff. I know my compadre will stay cool under pressure. So it's me versus the Traveler? All right. Yes. I haven't quite got the hang of this game yet. So, apologies in advance for any blunder. <laughs> Press the melee combat strike. Attacks with quakes? Oh no. Oh. Steroids. See? A death is steroids. Kabuto is a force to fit just like last time when my general threw you a few curveballs. The mightiest blade cannot slay its foe except in the hands of why wise words, Grandmaster. Oh, okay. Good thing my compadre kept it together. Wow, what a blast. I could get into this whole beetle battle. <sighs> this is so much fun. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to stick around and... Okay. All right, time to kick her ass once again. Oh, I thought that was... Oh, I fucked up. Oh my god, I'm getting absolutely dog. No, fuck you. We need to fire that electro ball. That's the first time I've ever failed. I got greedy. I got greedy. <laughs> Never be greedy, chat. Never. I do it all the time in a lot of games. Oh. What?
full counter. Hehe. <laughs> No frills insta kill? <laughs> what? No, 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 this this makes no sense. How, how did you do that? My my reputation is destroyed. <laughs> it's like a pain to the heart. <laughs> oh my god, bro, it's so fucking dramatic. <laughs> it was an honor doing battle with you, good sir. What the? So polite. <laughs> Been busy losing while we were away, Bullchucker? I don't see it that way. Unless the bona fide Beetle Battle King is ready to give up now, he hasn't lost to me in battle and in life. It's normal to hit setbacks every once in a while, but a setback only turns into a failure if you make the decision to stop. Word! Heck yeah! I ain't about to admit defeat yet! Still, there's nothing to be gained from constantly making excuses. Don't put all your energy into talking garbage. Spend it on fighting a little harder instead. Dang, she's got oh, she's wise. Burn. Oni King, this brand of enemy doesn't seem to be your area of expertise. I advise you send in another of your generals. Watching others do battle is also a crucial part of a warrior's training. Some skills one learns by doing, others one learns. Ah, good point, Grandmaster. And good timing, compadre. Oni King's right hand, I'm handing the fight over to you. I'm always doing all your fights because you're a bitch. Ah, but I love you. Make it count, traveler. So I'm going head to head with the legendary traveler. Guess I better look. I do love Ito. Let's see. Hostile jet streams. Yeah, the fucking laser cannons. Huh? Ow. Full counter! Nicely done. You beat me. I'd go as far as to say that it's an honor to lose against the travel. Ah, so that's how you do it. I never would have thought of that. Do you ever think, sir? Yep. When you're up against a cunning enemy, you gotta get creative. <laughs> I didn't know holding Q was when creative. You can't fail, you have to change your point of view. In our journeys far and wide, we often have to think on a clinging to old methods can never solve the problem, no matter how. I think Shinobu said something like that once, too. I guess there's something to it after all. But I'll mull it over some other time. Right now, my focus is on the task at hand. More beetle fighting! Do-do-do-do-do-do-do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it fired a second shot, bitch. Whoa, whoa. Oh, I didn't think I would lose that. Whoa, whoa. I'm... I was uh, <laughs> a little worried there.
Guava. Hey, hmm. good to see Excuse everyone. me, sorry. How's it going? Shangling Guava, you finally made it. Well, Bullchuck is certainly having a blast. The day has finally come. Bum bum bum. Guava san, I've been training hard at the Arataki Blazing Armor Beetle Battle Boot Camp, and now I want to show you just how far I've come. Uh, and Crimson Staff too. If my progress satisfies you, then please teach me. Show me the way to communicate with Crimson Staff, Crystal Tornado, and all the shelled organisms of this world. Do that, and I swear, once I become the reigning champion of the beetle fighting world, I will build a mighty statue in your image at the Arataki Gang's beetle fighting headquarters. Do you even have a headquarters, Ito? Like, seriously? What the? Gobo's got a what beetle? The? guoba -san got a brand new Oni Kabuto. Normal. It appears to be not a typical Onikabuto shell, but one built of resilient wood. Is it wearing a suit of armor? We told Granny all about your Onikabuto boot camp. It really piqued her interest when she heard that Guobo was getting a disciple. As it turned out, a friend of hers had made a whole bunch of gardening and landscaping machines to look after the silk flowers on the terrace. They're called bloom pruners. Is this a uh, cloud retainer, the bird I have, who I'm hoping to pull a for? A bloom pruner can transform into the shape of any creature to blend into its environment. Squirrels, butterflies, finches, you name it. So Master gave Globa a bloom pruner and got it to take the form of an Oni Kabuto so it can... That's pretty high tech for a gardening appliance. Uh, Shaolin's master is Madame Ping, so Madame Ping's friend... <gasps> Aha! Of course! No machine can compare to a real live Oni Kabuto warrior. Did Guobasan pick a dumbed down enemy on purpose so we can showcase all our awesome? You may be wise to temper your optimism, Oni King. <laughs> My beetle senses are failing to detect this Oni Kabuto's might. Or perhaps. It's too profound for. It's not even alive. There's nothing for you to sense. Uh, anyway, Guobasan may possess limitless power, but a warrior needs to be one with his weapon. The bond between Oni Kabuto and Trainer is forged through blood, sweat, and tears, not wood, mesh, and gears. <laughs> Crimson Staff, let's get this duel going. It's time for Guobasan to witness my true potential once and for all. Dude. <laughs> Jesus. Damn, that thing's big. Oh. Whoa. I think teleported. What the hell? Bitch. Oh, it cracked. It's cracked everywhere. <laughs> Music, no. <laughs> Ah, so they go. Oh, Bullchucker sure made short work of the bloom proof. I won! Victory is mine! With my trusty crimson staff, I have defeated the mighty Guobasan! Alrighty then. <laughs> Guobasan, if I have earned your recognition, <laughs> I humbly ask you to teach me the ways of shelled organism communication. Just, just his face. Uh huh? Guobasan, you look pleased? But you, does this mean you're proud of me for my swift pro- Oh, shucks. I don't know what to say. <laughs> you're too kind, Guobasan. Oh, you're just being modest. I know you were going to- It looks like Guoba's all warmed up now. The bloom pruner is ready to operate a full- Guoba, remember the plan? In this round, we want to increase the bloom pruner's power output from a tenth of a percent to one percent, okay? Any higher and you'll risk knocking Ito's Oni Kabuto out. Ugh. Okay, there it is. I 
Paimon knew something was up. As I feared, we have. Wait, hold on a minute. A tenth of one percent? As in zero point one percent? As in one one thousandth? <laughs> be kidding me all that was just one one thousandth of its top power well, the way he just popped up and appeared <laughs> guoba's a little confused you did say you wanted to train your oni kabuto to defeat crystal tornado correct i thought it would go without saying given the size the bloom pruner has to shift rocks the size of casserole dishes so obviously it even then Crystal Tornado is bigger still. It dwarfs me and Guoba, and it's even taller than... That's impossible! If we were talking, oh, twice as strong as the last fight, I think I'd have a shot. Ten times as strong, and we're already looking at losing most if... About a thousand times stronger? Who am I kidding? <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's gonna start crying. When your tactics fail, you have to change your point of view. In our journeys far and wide, we often clinging to old methods can never solve the problem. No ma Of course, Guobasan. This is what you've been trying to tell me. I gotta study mechanics. Then build a suit of armor for Crimson Staff that'll take his abilities to a whole new level. Or maybe, heck, I, I could build a bigger, stronger mechanical Oni Kabuto, piloted by Crimson Staff under my... <gasps> <laughs> He's like... <laughs> Hold on. Wait, where is it? Uh... <laughs> Oni Kabuto piloting a mechanical Oni Kabuto? How do you expect to pull that off? It does not even still count. Seeing the power of Bloom Pruner has made me realize something. There's a natural limit. People have tried to tell me this before. Shinobu, the Grandmaster, especially Sky Cleaving White Iron Lavender Melon. Admitting defeat is shameful, but not even trying to mix up your. Wobasan has shown me a new path. With this new technique in my arsenal, size will be no obstacle to me and my valiant beetle warriors as we set out to beat. It's like, what the fuck? I love how angry he looks. <laughs> looks like Woba's not too sure of mechanics, huh? Hmm. I'd have to get my master to see if her friend would be willing to help. She's. Did you say expert? Please, Gobasan, Chef Sama, my savior, introduce me. Uh huh. Thinking of becoming the second Arataki gang member to study in Liyue, are you? Uh, Shinobu, when'd you get back? <laughs> Time's up. We spent our last mora on these boat tickets. And if we don't get to the harbor pronto, they'll- But, 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 I, I, give me a minute, okay? We're, we're- Yeah, I heard. I was actually very pleased to hear the suggestion of you doing some sort of studying coming out of your own mouth. I have some relevant experience, so I can write a little booklet to get you started. But unfortunately, studying in Liyue is very expensive. The Arataki Gang's typical expenditures are a drop in the ocean by comparison. So, what do you intend to- It'll be fine. I'll just, uh, I'll work like a horse. What I know what I'm getting into here, all right? I got it all planned out in my head. It's not like I've never gotten paid work before. As soon as I get earning, well, and don't think for one second I'll be abandoning you or the rest of the Arataki gang, neither. I ain't the kind of head honcho that runs off to go study. If we're gonna study, we do it as a team. Once I've got enough mora for everyone's tuition fees, the whole Arataki gang is coming to Liyue. We'll study together, learn some epic new skills together, and come out the other side as the stronger, smarter, invincible Arataki gang. You're saying all of the right things. Uh, who are you, and what have you done with Boss? <laughs> wow, Bullchucker! Those were some bold words! You better make sure you follow through. <laughs> of course I, uh, I Character development, baby! Deeds in terms of what kind of work I can get and how much I can break in per day, but... Yeah. In that case, Oni King, I'll stay here in Liyue. Firstly, this will enable me to fight. Secondly, now that word of the Arataki Blazing Armor Beetle Battle Boot Camp has begun to spread, I'll be able to scout. Also, if the Oni King's right hand and sky cleaving white iron lavender melon wish to continue battle. Awesome! Good thinking, Grandmaster. Okay, standard procedure applies. I'll let your grandpops know what you're up to so he won't worry about you. <laughs> Man, I am so pumped to see- I do need to make one thing clear, though. I can't promise that we'll be able to talk an Adeptus into taking you on as students. 
Yenfei and I will do our best, but we'll just have to... The great master of whom you speak boasts a skill others can only dream of. Their pride and prestige don't phase us. The important thing is that I, on behalf of the Oni King and the Arataki Gang, can find a way to show them we're serious and sincere in our quest to master the mechanical arts. So I'll need to do some research to find out what kind of gift we should offer if we're to be seen as worthy of learning the mysteries behind the manufacturer of the Bloom Pruner. Boss, we gotta leave right now or we're not gonna make it... <sighs> All right. Traveler, <laughs> Paimon, Yanfei Senpai, Miss Shengling, Guoba. I gotta use the All bathroom a really bad. Help to boss with this beetle battle of please. Take this as a token of my gratitude. I hope you can find some use for it in your future endeavors. Is it um <laughs> the winning the next 50-50 guaranteed? <laughs> Time has come. Adios, compadre. See you, sky cleaving white iron lavender melon. Goodbye, Guobasan and Chef Sama. And farewell, my savior. I'll be back real soon. I promise. La, 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 la. <laughs> He's so cute. Don't make promises you can't keep, Bullchuck. It's good to have ambitions, but don't let yourself get carried away in the heat of the moment. Do what Shinobu tells you. Be realistic about what you can achieve. But of course, if everything works out, Paimon can't wait to see Crimson Staff driving a ginormous mechanical Onikaba till the next time we meet. <laughs> Dude, I wouldn't mind doing mech battles. <laughs> it gets... He's like, huh? All right, now I can do this, and then I can head to the bathroom. Oh. Huh? Clip to claim all the rewards. Nom 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 nom. I thought this event was gonna be longer. I don't know. It just took an hour. That's not bad. And look at all those delicious primos. Oh, I almost have enough for 50 wishes. Let's go. Cloud Retainer, you're coming in sight, I believe. Hmm. Okay, so... I do have more planned, because, um... I still haven't done their story quests, so... Oh lord, I still haven't even done their hangouts. So we'll do Lenny's story quest after I go use the bathroom, so I'll be back.
Ugh. Hi, howdy ho. Sorry it took so long. Took a little. I had to use. Ugh. After I used to bathroom I saw my dad like looking at like the Fort Sill training from 1987 and he told me he's just like oh, I was doing training for that in the army in 1985 and he's recognizing some of the people like and stuff and I asked him hey you ever throw a grenade and he's just like and he's like yeah they're a lot heavier than you think I was like oh that's cool and then um and I asked him if he ever fired a sniper rifle and he's just like, no, but I, fi I had a 50 cal. You think which is, do you think is better, a sniper rifle or a, a 50 cal? <laughs> and I'm like, well, it depends on what you need to do. If you want to eviscerate something, obviously the 50 cal. I was just like, yeah, I've blown up my fair shit. I've shredded through things with the 50 cal many times. And I'm like, oh my lord. <laughs> uh, I just thought it was funny in one of those <laughs> Charlotte! I see. So you believe that this warning letter was sent by the Phantom Weasel? Uh, Phantom we Oh my god. Absolutely. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Phantom Weasel never acts as you expect. He must have faked his own death ten years ago using a body. Now that he's back, I'm sure the guards who worked on his case back in the day are in for a headache. But however this turns out in the end, the one thing it won't be... It's Lenny. Is couldn't agree more. As a journalist, I'm gonna get a lot of mileage out of this one. No. <laughs> so, Philly, I, hold on, I'm cleaning off my glasses real quick. Thank you, sir, for your time. Oh, now, that's who better. Who should I interview next? Oh, oh, hey, what a coincidence. Fancy meeting you here. <laughs> that oh, really got me. <laughs> Perfect timing. So, the Phantom Weasel's latest warning letter. Yeah. This is the first time we're hearing of this one. Could you clue us in? Huh? Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, this case is from a decade ago. I guess you wouldn't know about it. Mm, nope, definitely but not. Not to worry. You're in good hands because I'm a professional. The story goes ten or so years ago, a phantom thief became active in the court of Fontaine. Known only as the Weasel. Nobody knew his true identity, and the authorities never managed. Wow, cool. He sounds like one of those mysterious night burglars that you read about in precisely. Well, except the part where they actually have a good reputation. Our weasel targeted whatever people held dear, and no one was safe from his predations. He would just as soon steal a necklace from a rich merchant's safe as he would a toy doll given to a commoner child for their birthday. Damn. I know. The phantom thieves you read about in novels rob the rich to pay the poor, but this guy did not discriminate. Unsurprisingly, this didn't work wonders for his public reputation. Every man and his dog wanted to see him behind bars. <laughs> so, I... Uh... Um, not exactly. There's a good chance that the weasel would still be at large to this day if it hadn't been for an accident. A magician named Caesar fell to his death in a botched high-altitude escape performed when the police went through his personal effects. They found a hoard of stolen loot and gadgets used for criminal activities. And that was how the Phantom Weasel's identity was revealed. Sure enough, thefts in Fontaine went down after Caesar's death. But today, ten years on, the notorious thief has once again issued one of his warning letters and pasted it on the gate of the Opera Epicles for all to see. Bum, 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 but it's totally I Lenny. I this morning to get a photo as soon as I heard. Here, it's this one. So, this is the warning letter, huh? Let's see what he wrote. Three days from now, when evening falls, I shall take from you that which you hold most dear at the opera house. Just as you did to me ten years ago. This is, without a doubt, a clear declaration of criminal intent. After years of laying low, the phantom weasel is what once seemed like an open and shut case has been blown wide open again. But why has he re-emerged now? And what does he want? I sense an epic scoop. And I'm going for it. Uh-oh. If this thief will steal anything that other people value, does that mean even we might be targeted? <laughs> really? Oh, let him try. In fact, I'm just going to eat all our snacks right now. Let's see what he can do about that. Okay, oh, my God. The people have spoken. It's clear that the public are very concerned about the phantom we 
weasels reappear. Let's see, I've got a photo of the letter, my interview notes. Lenny! Yep, that should be enough to form the skeleton of my article. It does feel like something is missing, though. Something exclusive. Who should I interview next? I need someone with a more concrete connection to the weasel. Hmm. <gasps> is that who I think it is? Yes. Lenny! Magic. Magician. Caesar! <gasps> the Phantom Weasel! That's it! Let's go interview Lenny! You see, the original Phantom Thief Caesar was a magician too! And what do Phantom Thieves and Magicians have in common? They both have an air of mystery about them. Perhaps there's a connection there. Are you serious? What sort of a deduction is that? Oh, relax. My journalistic instinct tells me that an exclusive news story is beckoning. Let's go. No time for delay. Hmm. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Wow, Mr. Magician, how did you know which card I picked? Magic. Oh, it's simple. Come closer and I'll let you in on my secret. Magicians have a special skill called telepathy, which means we can read other people's minds. Really? Then, what am I thinking now? Well, first you need to relax. Because I can see that you're clenching your fist in your mind, as if to say, no, I mustn't let him guess it. Aww. <laughs> and now you're getting a little flustered. You're trying to find a way to empty your mind, to think of nothing at all. But the more you try to hide a secret, the easier it'll come out. <laughs> and I feel like he's gaslighting him. It's thinking what he today, wants. Didn't you? You told your family a little lie so you could come out and play. Now, now, that's not a good habit. <laughs> this, 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 I love it. You, you can tell? Uh, oh boy, you really can read my mind. <laughs> of course. Oh, and that's the end of my performance. You should really be heading home. Remember to apologize to your family, all right? They must be- uh, All right, got it. Bye, Mr. Magician. I don't know why I don't use Lenny more. I've barely used him. Uh, hey, Lenny. I have so many characters now. It's like, well, I don't know hello. who to use. We meet again. Are you looking for me? What's the situation? Telepathic. Oh, please. You didn't believe that spiel, did you? The power of telepathy is quite... I'm sure that child would beg to differ. Seemed like you were right on... That was nothing more than a little trickery. I made an educated guess based on his micro-expressions. That, <laughs> plus the fact that he was the only kid here without his parents, and he looked as guilty as sin. He made it easy for me. You guys, on the other hand... Hmm. Let me guess. Don't tell me you're here for the Phantom Weasel. Wow! Cut it in one! Wait, really? <laughs> no, no trickery this time. It was pure luck. His warning letter's been the talk of the town, so I figured that maybe you were asking around about that. Bingo! I plan on writing a column reporting on the latest news about the Phantom Weasel. Hmm. So, Lenny, what are your thoughts on this infamous thief's reappear- Hmm... To be honest... It makes me angry. Angry? What? You read his letter, right? The Phantom Weasel claims he's planning something in three nights' time at the Opera House. That's the night I'll be perf- Hmm. Ah, what are the chances? <gasps> Wait a minute, you don't think he's after you, do you? Well, if he is, then his warning is clearly a direct challenge to me personally. And if he's not, then it's still going to be a huge headache. The mere mention of the Weasel's name is enough to scare people off. So once the contents of that letter get out, barely anyone will be showing up to watch my- But I've been preparing for this for a long time. I'm not about to let him ruin my big day. This leaves me with only one choice. I have to expose the Phantom Weasel's identity before the sh- Really? So what you're saying is, 
We might get to see a live duel between a famous magician and an infamous thief. Ooh. Wow, this has exclusive written all. To be honest, I'm not sure if I'll emerge the victor. The Phantom Weasel is a notorious crook, infamous for his inscrutable. You're being far too modest, Linny. I think your magic tricks are even more inscrutable than those. Thanks for the compliment, though I have to say. I don't care much for the comparison. A lot of people liken magicians to thieves because we both have the ability to make things disappear without the person noticing. But there's an important difference that these people... Allow me to demonstrate with a quick magic trick. Here, I have a flower. Just an ordinary flower that was picked not long ago. Watch it carefully now. Three, two, one. <gasps> it's gone! That's the question. Where did it go? Therein lies the difference between us. Thieves make precious things disappear, but only magicians make them reappear. If I could now invite you all to check your clothes, there might be a su A surprise? Oh, oh he put it on. Don't worry, I didn't take offense. I just wanted to take the opportunity to perhaps change some of the preconceived notions you might have of since Caesar's death. A lot of people associate magicians with criminality. It can be quite frustrating. I can imagine. Um, coming back to your trick just now, might I presume that you are well versed in floral symbolism? For example, magicians often use rainbow roses in their flower related performances to represent passion and romantic encounter. But you used a loomy do spell, which, if I'm not mistaken, allude to separations. I'm curious to know if there was any deeper meaning behind. Impressive knowledge. It's no wonder you're such a successful journalist. But I'm afraid I don't know the first thing about floral symbolism. I'm just in the habit of using Lumidu spells in my match. It sounds like something I should look into, though. Hmm. I'll buy myself a copy of Fontaine's Floral Language Facts when I have some time. But it'll have to wait until this phantom weasel business is behind us. Well, no. True, true, true. In that case, this brings us to the end of our interview. I, for one, am looking forward to the final showdown between you and the... Th Please feel free to get in touch to update me on any further developments. Otherwise, I will, of course, see you at your show in three days' time. But let's hope the Phantom Weasel is caught by then. If there's nothing else, uh, I'll be off. You've given me lots to work with here, and I've got no time to lose if I want to write that exclusive piece. I'll see you all later. I, I really want a Charlotte hangout event. Tell us how you did that flower trick. <laughs> I'm afraid that's my little secret. <laughs> well, magicians are entitled to their secrets. But Paimon's really itching to know how it's done. You feel it too, right? So itchy. <laughs> Not so itchy then, huh? Well, since you're so concerned, how would you like to serve as my temporary magician's assistant and help me invest? Magician's assistant? Oh. <gasps> That sounds fun! Assistants <laughs> are technically magicians too! Also, it'll bring us one step closer to figuring out how that darn trick is done! Shall we go for it? Excellent! Thank you for putting your trust in moi. The first thing we need to look into is who Caesar really was. If he truly was the Phantom Weasel, that means that the Weasel is dead, and whoever wrote this warning letter is just a copycat criminal. But if he wasn't the Weasel? Hmm... Well, that'll make things more interesting. It would mean that the weasel lives, and he's been laying low all this time in some corner. And if we're investigating Caesar, his fiance Gemma is a good place to start. Word is that she visits the cemetery often, so I asked Lynette to wait for... We should make a move. Let's go and rendezvous with Lynette. I kind of want to do a Lenny team. Hold on a sec. Let me look up a team. Oh, Lenny's like a mono pyro a lot. 
I'm opening all the wrong things. Uh, there you are. I'll bring my seasonings. Gonna be epic. And I guess Kazaha. All right, let's head off. Oh, I don't even have any artifacts for him or talent levels. Fuck it. I forgot. That's why I didn't really use him. I uh, needed to gear him. I haven't been doing any artifact domains lately because it's just like I'm just barely doing weekly bosses. And then sometimes talent domains. No, I do have a signature weapon, but I looked into that. Look that! We need to do a have a hangout event with her. Come on. You took your t Sorry, I bumped into the traveler and Charlotte en route, and we ended up chatting. It's been a while, Lynette. We're working as Lenny's temporary assistants in the investigation of the Phantom Weasel. Thank you. It's good to have you helping. So, what's the situation? Have you seen? J nope. I've been here a while, and she still hasn't shown up. How bizarre. Maybe it was bad int- Well, we won't get anywhere by standing around waiting. Traveler, Paimon, let's go ask around. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, good sir. Gemma? You mean Caesar's fiance? Sure I do. I'm just trying to get a hold of her because I need her help with something. I heard she comes here a lot. Yeah, she does. <sighs> Poor thing. It's no secret why, either. Ever since Caesar passed away, she's been coming here once every week to clean his grave. Often, she just sits there in front of his headstone, lost in thought. So I asked her what she was doing once. She said she wanted to speak to him. She knows he's gone and can't hear her from the grave, but she just likes to spend time there, telling her fiancé all about how her life is going. Dude, why can't we get a, get a Genshin male character that's this fucking jacked? She's been doing this ever since Caesar passed away? Oh, so 10 years. Wow. They're lovely. I'll bet. Caesar's reputation fell apart after his identity was revealed, so no one else visits his grave. I don't know if the mind lives on in the waters after death, but if it does... I'm sure Caesar must be grateful to have some. If I'm honest, I think this is all so unfair to poor Gemma. Her fiance was a low-life crook. He doesn't deserve someone like. Her. Anyway, all of that said, she's running later than usual today. Normally, she'd be sitting in front of his grave by now. Well, that's everything I know. I'm afraid. You might have more luck asking some. All right. Well, thanks for sharing all of this with. You're welcome. I just hope she'll be able to move on. Mmm, unlike you. Unlikely with 10 years. She's dedicated. Did you hear the news? They're saying the Phantom Weasel's back. You're kidding. Wait, isn't he dead? I don't know anymore. All sorts of news flying around nowadays. I can never tell what's true. But what if? Just hypothetically, I mean. What if this Weasel's the real deal? And Caesar- Called it. Seriously, 10 years ago on the day it all went down, I said to myself, you know what? This guy's been set up. The Caesar I knew was a good guy. He gave balloons to children on the street for Pete's sake. What, are we supposed to believe that he was a balloon thief? Or oh, please. Weren't you the one cursing his name to high heaven when the police announced the news? You were all, oh, that gosh darn lousy son of a, oh, you think you know a guy, or words. Wait, did I say that? Hmm, I don't seem to recall. <laughs> Hello there. Sorry for disturbing you, but I couldn't help but notice you were discussing. We're actually quite interested in this topic as well, but we're struggling to get to the bottom of it. Do you think you could... You've come to the right people. Yep. I was there. Back when Caesar used to perform magic... He was a great magician. The best trick I ever saw him do was pop a transparent balloon, only for a whole bunch of doves to fly out. I was right up close and didn't blink or look away once. But for the life of me... 
I still don't have the- I saw him perform too. He always used to bring some gifts along for the kids who came to watch his show. And he'd hand- Sometimes, he even got the kids to write their wishes down, and then he'd make the items on the wish list appear in his- Huh. He doesn't- But after he died, there were also rumors that he used the wish list to find out what was precious to people, with the intent to steal- As I'm sure you know, the Phantom Weasel would steal just about anything from- Whatever the case, now that the Weasel is back, Caesar's become a hot top- I bet Gemma must be pleased. If Caesar's name gets cleared, maybe it'll finally give- No, speak of the devil. That's her over there. If you've got any more questions about Caesar, she's- So that's Gemma. Uh, is it just Paimon, or does it look like some- Wait, it looks like she's injured. Come on, let's see if she- <laughs> How can you tell that from that distance, girl? Uh, hi there. <sighs> Who's asking? Don't be afraid, we mean no harm. It looks like you're injured. How bad is it? Thanks for your concern, but you didn't answer my question. Who are you, and what do you want with- My name is Linny, and this is my sister Lynette. My name's Paimon, and this here's the Traveler. We're investigating the- The Weasel posted a warning letter this morning. If he still lives, that means that Caesar was falsely- You knew Caesar better than anyone else. So if you're willing, we'd love to hear what you- <sighs> I promise you can trust us. We won't hurt you. In fact, we'll do all we can to- I... I never believed that he would- Huh. I suspected as much. Okay, so going back ten years, do you remember anything strange in the weeks leading up to the accident? Did Caesar have a falling out with- No. Not that I know. <laughs> Got it. All right. Sorry for dis- If you don't have any more questions, please leave. I want to be alone with him. Lynette noticed she lied or something, that's what it was. Judging by the look on her face, there's definitely... She's lying. She definitely knows something. That's fair. We're just a bunch of strangers who showed up and started questioning her about things that happened a whole decade ago. It makes sense that, in any case, I doubt we'll get any further here, so let's call it a day. Meet me outside Hotel de Boer tomorrow. He has the coolest auto attacks. Like for like a bow character. Oh, I think it's like under. sure what to talk about. My brain's getting tired from all the stuff I've been doing. Hopefully I'll be able to clear up a lot of this Genshin content um, before or like during my uh, vacation at work from work. Over here. Joining us today? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I've had her follow Gemma and see if we can make any inroads with her. They should be at a still. I don't think that Gemma's likely to open up to us. Today we'll be looking into a guy named Lorenzo, Caesar's former pupil. When Caesar passed away, all the stolen goods discovered in his home were confiscated and returned to their rightful owners. 
But Lorenzo was the only one privy to all his magic secrets, and before long, Lorenzo was the next big magician in town, his fame surpassing even that of his master, and it made him very wealthy. He's since left the magic scene, though, and these days, he's a wealthy businessman with his fingers in a lot. I had to pull a lot of strings, but I managed to get him to agree to a couple of drinks with me. Be warned, though, I hear he's got a hair trigger temper. We. No, oh, Lord. He's one of those. There's one thing I like about this Sealy. I mean, like, I like the coloring, but this is my problem with some of the Sealies. I don't have them all. I just have, a, like, I just have two. Like, I love this one. This one is so pretty, but... Is it going to do it? Oh, I don't remember this idle animation. Oh, he was doing that during the cutscene. But it makes a lot of noise, and it's Neglected annoying. To mention that you were bringing two other people with you. Oh, I hate you already. My apologies. These two are my assistants. When they heard that I was meeting with the former magic maestro himself, they begged and pleaded with me to bring them along. Um, and if it's no trouble, a couple of... Oh, forget the pleasantries. Just sit. <laughs> Get a load of this guy. Forget the pleasantries, he says, but he looks pretty happy about Lenny stroking. I only agreed to meet since we're both magicians. Do me a favor and cut to the chase. I have more important things to do than drink. Much obliged, sir. As it happens, the matter I want to address is also... Yesterday morning, a warning letter from the Phantom Weasel appeared on the entrance to the Opera House. He claims to be planning something for the same evening that I'm scheduled to do a magic show there. As such, I believe that I may well be his tar- I have to get to the bottom of this to ensure that my show can go ahead as planned. Naturally, any investigation into the weasel starts with a few questions about Caesar. What is there to investigate? Caesar was the weasel and he's been dead for ten years. So what if some sick creep thought it'd be funny to write a warning letter? It changes nothing. Are you trying to tell me you actually bought- Please, sir, no need to get so worked up. I do concede that a copycat is but one possibility. It's a fact, Linny. Look, my patience is limited, so listen carefully while I'm still willing to put up with you. The weasel is dead. Period. Everyone knows that, so do yourself a favor and quit this investigation. It'll lead you nowhere. Look, if this affects your magic show in any way, I will personally compensate you for any losses. Oh, sir, I'm... Honored, really. But this isn't about finance. My pride as a magician is what's at stake here, Lorenzo. Copycat or not, this person has thrown me the gauntlet, and I must meet their challenge. He Your pride? <laughs> Don't mince words with me, boy. Just tell me what exactly are you. I want to find out the Phantom Weasel's true identity. I have to know for myself what really happened. What would that accomplish? And what do the events of ten years ago have to do with you anyway? Look, you of all people should know that a magician never reveals their secrets. And in any case, dead men don't talk. So if you really care about your magician's pride, then you'll forget about Caesar and move on. Mm, sus. I bet he's the one who killed him. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. This is getting... Renzo? Is that... Oh, it is you! <laughs> I know that big... Uh, booming voice anywhere. <laughs> Another day, I'm busy. Oh, come on. You can't be all business all the time. <laughs> you know what they say. Live fast, die. Young. <gasps> you gotta learn how to kick back and relax once in a while. If I wanted your life advice, I'd ask for it. Now get out of my face and go be drunk somewhere else. Sorry, my good sir. I don't believe I've had the pl Oh, hey. Um, Edmondo, he and I are business pals. We work together a bunch. This is your first time meeting him? Oh, he's always like this. Foul mouth and hard nose. Never heard a kind word out of this guy. Uh, and he wonders why he can't get a girlfriend. Despite being, what, pushing 40, 30-something? Anyway. 
point is, a lot older than when he first got rejected by the girl he was into. And he's still into, from what I hear. Oh, he's after, he was after Caesar's wife. So he killed him <laughs> to try to get her, but she said, nah, fuck you. Shut up and get out of my face. Another word out of you and you can forget about doing business with me ever again. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I may have had a little too much to drink. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm gonna. What a dick. I think it's high time I made a move as well. If you really want to investigate this, Linny, be my guest. But if nothing good comes of it, don't say I didn't warn you. Sus, sus. I already voted. Well, that fell to pieces in a rather spectacular fashion. Totally. And what was all that about compensating you for your losses? Why would someone you just... He's got to be hiding something. And not like Gemma. She was a little suspicious, but this guy's definitely... I think so, too. We need to look into Lorenzo. That guy Edmondo seems to know a thing or two about him. He only just left. Let's see if we can catch... Oh, no. Boop, boop. Yeah, that that noise that thing makes. So that's one thing that bothers me because it does it like constantly. Yeah, I'm gonna bring out the paper guy. I haven't brought him out in a while. This was actually my first pet in Genshin because I missed a few. Okay there? I bet he threw uh, up. Who are you? Oh, it's you guys. Don't worry about me. I must have had one too many. Uh, I just need to... I say way too much back there, didn't I? Yeah, I nearly talked myself into complete financial ruin. <laughs> Note to self, no more drunken chats when Lorenzo... So he was serious about threatening to cut you off? Ugh, I'm a new... Hey, 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 hey! Keep your voice down. Don't go prying into Lorenzo's personal affairs. <laughs> Bad things happen to people who ask too many questions or make an enemy out of What kind of bad? Don't even ask. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to have to cut this conversation short. I'm not crossing that line. And take it from me. Trouble with Lorenzo is one thing you don't need in your life. You some flare up back there. I don't know what you said to him, but clear. That's not a good sign. You're, you're too young for this. And don't get... Hmm. And there he goes. <sighs> Shh. I think we're being watched. Someone was listening in to our whole conversation. That dude. Sus. Secret agent. Don't say anything and don't look back. Any altercation in the city will attract the guards. We'd better take this elsewhere. Dude, God damn, we went we're going far from the city. Why is there not a dark mode for the loading screen? Because it's like getting blasted in the face by the fucking sun. <laughs> That's one thing I hate about Genshin. I know it's probably worse because I had the lights off in my room. You followed us a long way. Why don't you come out and introduce? So you're Linny. And where's your sister? Ain't she with you? Save us the trouble and go fetch her for us. Let's not- Hyman doesn't like the tone of your voice, mister! Who sent you? Save your questions, missy. You ain't gonna need answers where you're going. Capiche? I've killed gods, fuck <sighs> you. Looks like we can't have- Now, I'm not the strongest fighter, so I hope you're ready- Don't worry, we got you! 
Hey, want to know Black Swan's kit? Into the wind. Nice and spicy. Let's light it up. And Isn't that that chick with the freaking uh the all the crystal hands? Vision wielders are always trouble. Intimidation ain't gonna work like it did sure. on the lady. Come on, let's scram. Hey, wise guys, we ain't going home. They got away. Wait, they hurt her. The the did his you wife. What they said just before they sounds like they just wanted to rub me copy and paste. Tactic, and they've already done it to someone else. But you're right. She was injured when we saw her yesterday, and she maybe she was too scared to tell us the truth because the. Hmm. Well, if that's the case, she should be more will- Let's head back to the cafe and- Haste attack versus disco after she- After using the skill to hit an enemy that has a wind shear, bleed, burn, or shock, each of these social has a 65% base chance of inflicting one extra stack of arcana. That's her trace. Whoops. Oh. Let me, let me grab the basic attack. <laughs> Let's see. Side silent dawn deals wind damage equal to 30 60 a per black swan's attack to a single enemy and has a 50 65 percent afflicting one stack of arcana on the attacked enemy target it and if the target currently hit with wind shear blue oh uh, okay so what do you do with those stacks of arcana Gemma? you again what is it this we just ran into the men who've been threatening you and we gave them a taste of their own medicine oh okay you'll so see you can relax now. what why i didn't tell you anything why would they come after <laughs> sounds like they're no strangers <laughs> that's putting it mildly i know them all too well and i hate them with every fiber of my being Let's see skill decadence false twilight deals oh i like that false twilight i love things that deal with the twilight maybe that's why i'm a dot hack fan <laughs> deals wind damage equal to 45 uh percent of black swans attack to a single enemy and adjacent targets at the same time there's 100 percent base chance of inflicting one stack of arcana on the target of enemy and the adjacent targets there's also 100 percent base chance of reducing targets defense the defense of the target enemy and adjacent targets by for the last scene three been turns. Ten long years and still every time i try to look into caesar's death they show up and warn me not to do how do i know i can trust you do you really think you can get to the bottom of it all and i'm afraid i can't reveal all the details just yet but i can promise you this i will expose the phantom weasel's true identity okay I, I understand because you see this is a personal matter of the utmost importance i give you my word trust me uh sacrament stacks what what are sacrament stacks okay i've heard that caesar used to have a magic workshop where he kept a lot of his personal effects if possible i'd like to take a look at them do you know where it is the fluvisonde but the place was sealed up by the police after his death, and no one's been there since. Let's see. Inflicts epiphany of all enemies for two turns. Enemies take 15% more damage in their turn, and their sacrament effect is regarded as wind shear, bleed, burn, and shock of addition. When their sacrament effect is triggered at the beginning of the next turn, the sacrament stacks are not reset. The stack non-reset effect can be triggered at a one-time infinity's duration, and it changes. Our charges are replenished when fifty applied. Deal wind damage equal a black swan's attack to all. I also know that the Fluvisandra is dangerous territory. Lots of hostile groups lurking around. If you're serious about going there, understood. 
Lynette, you stay here and take care of Gemma. D <sighs> Got it. But if I'm staying here, I'm ordered. I mean, bon appetit. But stay sharp, too. They're likely... Okay. All right. Power saving mode off. I'll start taking this more seriously now. And second stacks counts as a type of... Uh, counts as every type of die. Oh, okay. So when you go... When they go off, it deals damage five times. Damn. Death by a thousand cuts. Alright, can I finish this weapon? Cool. I want to get every weapon I own to max level, so that's why I leveled it. Also, that's for each stack. It stacks up to 50 times? Jesus. One with nature. If Gemma gave us the right location, then the workshop should be right nearby. Huh. Looks like these boxes are... There we go. It should be just down here. Can you say every time an enemy target receives that at the start of each turn, a day's chance for a flu... He afflicted with Arcana while well, afflicted with Arcana enemies targets receive wind die equal to Black Swan's attack at the end of each turn. Attack by Arcana increases the dot damage multiplier by the Arcana resets to one stack. Arcana can stack up to 50 times. Oh, so that's pretty, that's pretty dope. The more you know. Oh, I have to use the trial any fuck. Well, he's probably this one's geared. Wait, did they give him no bless? They did. They always give no bless. C3. Okay. Well, mine's not even geared. There are seven or more kind of stacks enables the current dot deal to ignore trying to the target and Jason targets it defense. Oh my god. I was not paying attention there, and I lost all my bursts. Yeah, you gotta love it. So this was Caesar's workshop. Hmm. Nothing suspicious here, just normal magic props. What's hidden further? <laughs> what was that? Oh, <gasps> it's so cute. Is this one of Caesar's gadgets? Uh, guess we must have triggered some sort of device. Damn, he does a lot of damage. Look, the doll in the box is glowing. There's something written on the card on this doll. Let's take a closer look. I had to make it three parts, but you skipped part two and just read part three. What? No, I didn't. I read the whole thing. I read all three of them. Oh, 
I was kind of mumbling one of them, but like, well, some of them, but no, I read all three. I even scrolled through just to double check. One of them looks different from the rest. Let's investigate. Bonus trace to every time an enemy target sees that damage, single enemy there, bit fixed five percent check, self -flicked. Hmm. I see. Oh, that's right. Can I find his patent? And so, uh, increases this unit's damage by six percent. Oh. That's so much percentages, I can't do math. magician thing this place is like some of it's super cute I wonder what the special cutscene will be that's weird have we reached the end already no it's a trick there's nothing here oh, maybe this was a wasted trip this place seems a little too ordinary for a magician's workshop there's a distinct lack of mystery. We've triggered quite a few devices on the way here. Hmm. I'm starting to wonder whether Caesar built this whole place as one. If so, then there must be more to this place than meets the eye. Maybe a hit. Aha. If I just move this book, then hopefully. And presto. Light cone reforge when emergence increases. Where's effect hit rate by 40% when the other deals damage to an enemy inflicted on wind shear burn shock? They will visually gain one sack of prophecy. This effect in second four times in a single battle. But that can guarantee one sack of prophecy in every stack of prophecy increases the wearers by attack by 5% dead too. Jesus. Honestly, with all those procs and those defense ignores, she sounds really broken, especially with that light cone. I'm a magician too, and apparently great looks pretty big inside. Let's head it. She is noise. That's calf on bro. She's gonna hit giga chat <laughs> numbers. That's the way I came in, isn't it? Yep. No hidden chests. Follow the wind. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> Just being sure. Wanna know what her outlines do? Ooh, they are pretty busted. Uh, sure. Our 
are the Eidolons what give the characters their powers, kind of like how Visions do for uh, the for Genshin characters? I don't know how that works in Star Rail. Eidolons are cons. Oh. Now disappear. Uh, constellations. Ah. Oh wait. I'm not thinking of idle ones. I'm thinking of uh, aeons. Yeah. It just looks familiar somehow. Let me check this out for a second while you got. If anyone makes a major discovery, let's. All right. Oh, Black Sun's act in battle. Enemies afflicted with wind shear burning. <laughs> Jesus, what the fuck? That sounds broken. The placement of this device in. Wait, that looks like his little s switcheroo thing. If she was in Genshin, wouldn't she be Kazuha 2.0? I feel like she would, yes. For me, my lamb. When an enemy with the sacrament face defeated, 100% Jewish and flicking five sacrament sent. Oh my god. <laughs> Ooh, it looks so pretty in here. We give D4. Wait, what about E3? While in Epiphany State, enemies target effective resistance reduced by 10%. Black Swan regenerates 8 energy at the start of the target's turn. And when the enemy is defeated, this energy can only trigger one time with the last. last. Uh, oh. At one of my shows a few days ago, a child asked me how I pulled candy out of my hat. Oh, they're just trace levels. Oh, kind of like how Genshin is as a joke but talent levels I told the kid that the hat has a built-in wish granting machine next thing I know today a whole bunch of kids were pestering me to pull all sorts of things out of that so I told them another white lie the machine needs time to power up but in the meantime you can write your wishes down well they took me up on that offer enthusiastically as I write this, I've only just got back from running around all over town, buying the things they wanted. Boy, are my legs sore. Yeah, I'm a pantheon, merciful, mess is pitiful. Oh, when Black Swan's teammates attack enemy targets, Black Swan's the ace chance of inflicting sacrament on each enemy hit. Additionally, every time Black Swan inflicts sacrament on an enemy, there should be a very fixed percent chance to additionally increase the sacrament stat. Oh my god. I wound up saving very little this month, but that's not a major issue. I now have a bigger problem. How am I going to hide all these things inside my hat? 
<laughs> She's like, I exist and I have value. <laughs> Two children came to talk to me after today's show. I don't know why they were out on their own. They looked much too young to be unsupervised. I do hope they got home safely. Anyway, they said that they wanted me to teach them how to do magic. It's not uncommon for children to ask this, of course, but I've never seen any of them as serious. Linny and Lynette, this was his mentor that he learned. She's probably going to be very good even I without told Kafka. Them that learning magic is very hard work, but that didn't phase them at all. It's like they already knew. It seems like something's bothering Lorenzo lately, but he won't. Surely he's not upset that I agreed to teach those two children. I'll have to talk if I have a good feeling about those kids. They're naturally talented, and it seems like they're not. They have all sorts of fantastic ideas. All I'm really doing is helping them develop a more professional standard. They wanted to call me master, but I told them they absolutely mustn't. Any magician worth their salt could have taught them what I have. They're the geniuses here. Compared to them, I don't deserve with time. I have no doubt that they could become far greater magicians than I. My only concern is why they're so mature for their age. I fear they've had to grow up too fast. I don't dare. Gemma thinks so too. She doesn't like being around them. Says that their eyes are too piercing. They don't bother me, but then again, I've... It's nearly time for me to go on tour. I asked the two kids if they'd like... I once overheard them talking about their father and their mission. Sounds like their parents have other plans. It's only been ten days since I first met them. But I think they're very tough, but also very cautious. And they trust no one but each other. They hide things from me too. For example, when I asked them where they live and why they wanted to learn magic, that's the thing about children. Whenever they're trying to cover something up, I can sense that their lives have been hard. Possibly even dangerous too. They're not like after thinking things over. I decided to tell them a bit about how I see the world. It's full of lies and falsehoods. And that is why we must find Shut the fuck up. truth. What? This is wrong! Uh, this is wrong! This is wrong! It's just wrong! It's just wrong! It's just wrong! It's fucked! P.S. Having fun? I hope they won't find my nagging annoying. Children are so opinionated nowadays. Will it do them more harm than good for someone they've only known 10 days? P.P.S. Maybe I'm overthinking this. Children aren't interested in grand philosophies. Oh, Caesar, Caesar. Just mind your own bit. Mm. Two magic geniuses with a father and a mission, huh? Sounds a lot like he was writing about Linny and Lynette, don't you? <gasps> so did they meet Caesar when they were kids? Hmm. <laughs> Linny. Shh. Hold that thought. As I expected, there's a lot of fishy things. Fishy. Uh-oh. All in good time. Before we go over our new leads, I want to tell you how a high-altitude escape is per- First, the magician slots themselves into a magic box in full view of the audience. The box is then suspended high in the air and a short while later- At this point, a dummy will fall out of the box, but it looks real enough to grab the audience's attention, and they start wi- Meanwhile, the real magician, who has by now blended into the crowd, waits for a good moment to make their appearance and put on a hysterical performance. Oh no! Is that me? Did I just- Very vivid description. Paimon can- The audience's gaze then turns to the magician, and by the time they realize what's happened, the dummy has vanished. As if everything that just happened. Of course, that's just how I think the process should work, theoretically speaking. The inventor of this trick never performed it successfully. When the box opened, 
Caesar was the one who fell out. He fell right to the ground from the highest point of the Opera House. <sighs> no one could hope to survive that fall. Not without a vision, at least. And no one else has ever attempted this trick since. My understanding of how it works is just based on what I could gather from his notes. So Caesar's famous high-altitude escape has... I was about to say how cool it would have been to see it in person, but... If it's that dangerous, it's probably for the best that no one else tries to do it. <laughs> Hell should have had a bit. Damn. I think the dude was set up. That's why he fell. Second. So if a dummy's supposed to drop out of the box, then... Glad you asked. That brings us to the secret. This box right here is the one that Caesar constructed himself to use in the performance. And it's not as simple as it looks. Inside, there's a device that once the magician's inside and the box is lifted up into the air, the audience is from where they're standing, they have a clear view of the front, sides, and bottom. But the back and the top are now no longer visible. Fun fact, Misha, the four-star ice... Destruction unit has a domain expansion. <laughs> Let's see. Hold on. Wait. Do I have it? Uh... Oh, Kumo, did you change your stream avatar? Or am I crazy? Oh, wait, where is it? Crap. <laughs> Wait, you're so beautiful. Creates a, a dimension, dream prison, which dots all enemy actions, caught and lasting for 15 seconds. Misha's next ultimate will deal two more hits when entered At battle. At this point, huh. the magician presses a button inside the box, opening a secret door out of view. He then escapes through this trap door onto the opera house roof, waits for the dummy to fall and distract nice. the audience, and quietly returns to ground level. That's way simpler than Paimon imagined. Even <laughs> well, there's a little more to it than that, of course. The hardest part of this trick is controlling the audience's mood and reactions. There's the falling dummy, the miraculous reappearance, the pompous performing. Maybe the magician would even have themselves tied up before it begins to strengthen the impression that there's many days and nights of careful research and painstaking practice would have gone into this. All culminating in a performance just a few minutes long, but one that still manages to transform the shock and grief of a tragic accident. Caesar was a highly accomplished magician. But unfortunately, even he... So, how did it go so wrong? You said you found some fishy stuff here, have you... I can make a pretty good... I looked into the case files. The magic box Caesar was using at the time of his death had the secret button I mentioned positioned on the right-hand side. And, sure enough, he always used his right hand as his dominant hand. Okay. But here's the strange thing. Most of the devices in this workshop have the mechanism on the left-hand side, including this box right here. Which leads me to believe that Caesar was in fact left-handed. Because a magician can't afford to have their most basic habits stand out too much. People naturally focus their attention on the most important de But a magician needs to be able to redirect an audience's attention at will, so as to avoid arousing their- The essence of magic is getting people to believe a lie. If even the truth raises eyebrows, the falsehoods become all the more difficult. And so, Caesar trained himself to use his right hand to align with his audience's expectations. Great magic always requires, but in his most stressful and nerve-wracking moments, and when no one was watching, reflex would kick in and he'd use his left hand. That's why he set his gadgets with the mechanism on his left. Exactly. I think that's likely what happened. Caesar would have been under a lot of time pressure during the escape. He'd have had mere seconds to open the hidden compartment, retrieve the dummy, then open the secret door, but I'm sure he was confident. He would have rehearsed countless times to the point where it was second nature. He'd barely need to think about what he was doing because muscle memory would guide him through. So he opened the compartment, took out the dummy, checked everything was in order, and then went to leave. With his left hand, he reached for the button, and suddenly, his heart skipped a beat. Much like when you reach for your keys but find your pocket empty, his mind needed a moment to... Instinctively, his left hand would keep feeling around for the missing button, maybe for another second or two. Until the... With the stakes being as high as they were, just a two-second delay cost him everything. The authorities would find nothing suspicious, 
and conclude that his death was due to his own error. <laughs> Alposo should have expected this betrayal. Damn. The boxes. Damn. And they didn't Umo, you're so ruthless. Him. But how would they be able to make the switch without being noticed? That would be difficult to pull off, no? It would have to have been someone who knew that he was left-handed and who could move his props around without arousing suspicion. Isn't that right, Lorenzo? Bum, bum, bum. As if none of us were expecting it. Just couldn't let sleeping dogs lie, could you? There's not a lot of people who'd go to all this trouble for some magician who died ten years ago. I didn't want to have to do this, you know. Silencing you the hard way just creates more problems for me, to, but I gave you your chance. I hoped you'd do what's good for you and back off like the lady, but... You mean Gemma? So you are the one who's... Yes, although however stubborn she might be, she was never much of a liability, but you people, you never even knew him, but for some reason you just wouldn't drop it. Which is why you can't leave this place alive. <laughs> Do your work. Look in the meme. Ar arena. <laughs> oh. Fallen leaves adorn my night. <laughs> the way it popped. <coughs> oh, you kids are tougher than you look. Had enough yet, Lorenzo? Your cronies can't help you now. I think it's high time you started talking. And what I'd really like to know is, why did you murder Caesar? Oh my god, I saw... <laughs> Bro, come on, that belongs in not safe for work! <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, if I had a more for every time you said that man's name. Of course you idolized I've Caesar. seen that Everyone before. Else did. But I was the real genius magician. He was just an amateur who did cheap tricks for gullible children. I was the one who made magic into the fine art it is today. The aristocrats doffed their hats to me. So it was jealousy. <laughs> you just... Bro, the Im implications, there's... It's not... <laughs> it's not me having a dirty mind. It's what it is. Jealousy. Hatred, more like. I hated Caesar. All he cared about was his magic. He poured everything into his Did you pray today? <laughs> and his stupid tours like it was just a hobby to him. Never bothering to think about Mora. What sort of fool devotes their life to the art of deception and... But the people loved him, didn't they? Oh, how they looked up to him. No one gave me a second look. All I ever heard was, Oh, your master's ama amazing. Yeah, so amazing that he was completely broke. Every other apprentice was living it up at their master's expense, but no, not me. I put in all the work, mastered all the skills, and it brought me nothing more. He forbade me from using magic to trick people out of their mora. There was nothing he had. And with his reputation in Fontaine, it was too risky for me to go it alone. As long as he was alive, if I dabbled in my own brand of money-making magic, he would expose me, and it would dis- I had to kill him. There was no other way. Hmm. And this was your only- m It was reason enough. What other motive would- Well, I was under the impression that there might have been other factors at play. For instance, Maybe you were in love with Gemma, but she was engaged to... In love with Gemma? D don't be ridiculous. Guess I was wrong about that then. <laughs> Next question. Are you... I am. Caesar was... so strict with me. He insisted that his way was the right way. That the sole purpose of magic... I never bought into any of that. I was more interested in the practical value of magic. 
Sure. Oh, yeah! Charlotte told us that the weasel would steal whatever... That's just how it looked from the outside. What would any thief want with second-rate loot? I've only ever talked I stole cheap things as a way of practicing my craft. It was other people's overactive imaginations that conjured up the preposterous image they then dubbed the fan. So that's the story, huh? Well, I hope you're ready to tell it. What choice do I have? You're a pack of wolves and you've got me between your jaws. You've seen what's here in my last ditch. So be it. I've enjoyed power and wealth for the last 10 years. The likes of which Caesar could never give me. I wouldn't choose for things to end this way. Very well. In that case, I'll... C Traveler, Paimon. Keep an eye on Lorenz... Step right up! <laughs> Lily has told me the whole story. Lorenzo, do you confess to the murder of C? Mm. <laughs> Look who's finally developed. What kind of disciple murders their own master? I hope it was worth it. Because they'll be hell to pay. True. Like it's all over. What should we do next, Lenny? Should we start preparing? Huh, let me think. Let's um, um, I have not. And Gemma first. With Lorenzo in custody, Gemma will no longer have to fear for her safety. Good point. We should go tell Gemma the good news right away. It'll give her some peace of mind. For sure. You're back. You were so quick. I've only just finished my third dessert. Your third? Your third? Lynette, come on. We've talked about this. Everything in moderation. You're not going to have any room left for dinner now. You sent the trailer and uh, uh, Honkai Star Rush. That's what I figured. That's what I was hoping you would do. It's fine. I'll shift to exercise mode and jog off the excess sugar. That's besides the point. <sighs> well, it's done now. <sighs> Point taken. Did everything <laughs> go okay? Of course! Lorenzo was no match for us! The guards are taking him into custody! Mommies and daddies? Ooh! Oh, ooh! I love that. That's amazing. I'm sorry. I still didn't know if I could trust you. I had my suspicions about Lorenzo, but I... It's okay. We understand. He did threaten you. Paimon would find it hard to trust straight, but you don't need to be scared anymore. I'm Sorry. Sorry. My emotions are all over the place right now. I've been waiting for this day to come for so long. I always wanted to report Lorenzo. He took all of Caesar's property, which I found suspicious. But I had people watching me all the time, so I couldn't risk looking. I was so afraid. I was scared he'd do something terrible to me, and then no one would be left to visit Caesar's grave. So I thank you all. Rango's ceremony announced Lorenzo's hold a memorial for Caesar all. Milf. Thank you all for clearing <laughs> Caesar's name. I never would have guessed that Lorenzo was the real phantom weasel. He never showed any signs that there were problems between him and Caesar in public. From the outside, Ugh, to think that lowlife's been living life to the fullest all this time while Caesar's name was getting dragged through the mud. At least his soul can finally rest in peace now. <laughs> if, if only I don't blame yourself, Gemma. Yeah, you still have the rest of your life to live. Caesar wouldn't want to see you spending it feeling guilt. Hmm. Cheer up, Gemma. My brother's doing a magic show at the Opera House tomorrow evening. Would you like to come along? 
It might raise your... This show will be a special one. We're holding it in Caesar's... In Caesar's honor. Oh, thank you. Great. We'll see you tomorrow evening. Travel. Don't worry. We'll be there. No way are we oh, going to miss um, out on a free magic show. Don't worry. We'll watch it after I finish Wait. Lenny's uh, oh, like chapter quest. Oh, yes! Caesar's diary! We never found out if the two kids Caesar taught magic to were Lenny and Lynette or not. Um, beautiful women I'd like to ask out. That's what a be be well. Oh. Well, well, guess we'll just have to ask Lenny tomorrow evening. Oh, excuse me. Why does that have to be so late? Uh, well, it's 1800, so that's like 6 o'clock. Never mind, that's not late. God, I feel like I have so many characters I want to build in gear, and I don't know where to start. Now disappear. Oh, hey, cool. I can upgrade this. fun. Oh wait, wasn't there like a cloud retainer trailer too? We can watch both of them. I mean, I've seen her leaked kits and stuff, but I still want to see like the little character stuff because the animations are pretty. Well, it wasn't like her character trailer, but like the extra story stuff. You can't tell me Honkai Star doesn't have some of the best husbandos in Gacha. I mean, I, yeah, some of them look very nice. Not I ain't gonna stone. lie. My brother's going solo today, so I'll be watching with you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everybody's ready. The great magician Linny has prepared a spectacular show for us all tonight, concluding with an all-new grand finale that no audience has ever. Thank you all so much for coming. Now. Prepare to join me on a journey through the mystic. I'm a turn to as an imaginary perseverant or per preservation. Oh. Exciting stuff is yes, it's just it, 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 no wonder Caesar is so bad at you. Hmm? Well, I was out on the street once and I saw children love magic. Because they're willing to believe in things that can't be rationally explained. Caesar had this amazing way of bringing them into a dreamlike world. And somehow, I felt drawn to him too. So I went up and asked him to do a trick for me. Aww, that sounds so romantic. What trick did he do? It was with a flower. He took it in his hand, snapped his fingers, and it magically appeared on my head. <laughs> I was so happy that day. No one had ever given me a flower before the, that. The, the trick was called the Rizzler. <laughs> oh, that's so cute! Uh, actually, now that you mention it, Lenny's 
Is that right? Then I suppose he's a romantic at heart, just like Caesar. So let's treasure oh. the time we have with him. The Lenny Aether ships just now got very concrete fan After art all, just from this. You never know when the people dearest to you might. That's right. Um, Paimon doesn't really know how to comfort you, but at the very least, no one's going to be intimidating you from now on. Right. Yes, you can breathe easy now, Phantom Weasel. See? Even Lynette says... What? Wait, what? The Phantom Weasel? Lorenzo escaped? Where is he? Uh, what do you mean? Fa As Lenny once said, a performer's job is to commit fully to their role and put on a flawless performance for their... Op but once the bag of tricks is empty and the curtain falls, it's time to end the show. The spotlight is no place for someone with no more cards. It's been ten years, Gemma. Aren't you tired of the grieving widow act? I think. What are you talking about? Traveler Paimon doesn't like where this is going. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all enjoying the perf. There will now be a brief intermission, after which Linny will perform the most electrifying act of tonight's show. The final performance will take place outside of the opera house, so please make. The Phantom Weasel never did like public places. <laughs> Don't worry, this place will be quiet soon. Let's talk somewhere else for I don't mind harem stuff as long as the MC is a bag of horseshit and dumber than Cramorant or Oh, isn't a bag of horseshit and dumber than Cramorant. Oh, okay. Explain yourself. The music just went really well with that tone there. Dear me, this is awkward, isn't it? And unfortunately, I'm all out of gadgets, so I'm afraid I can't. This is a big mistake for a magician to make, but thankfully, I do. Uh, Lenny, don't we have more? Lynette accused Gemma of being the real Phantom Weasel a moment. All in good time. Magicians are good at guessing what people are thinking. I know the questions you want to ask. And as it happens, the story I'm- Really? Well then, let's hear it! Let's go back to the very beginning. A decade ago, when the Phantom Weasel was terrorizing the Court of Fontaine. She never missed a target, never left a trace, and no treasure was safe from her thieving hands. What did said Phantom Weasel do? Steal a bunch of stuff? But as her infamy grew, so did the readiness of the police, and her opportunities to act became ever fewer. Every day, she ran the risk of being exposed. Of course, she could not simply take this lying down, and before long, she found her ticket to freedom. She would create a scapegoat, a false weasel to close. After weighing her options, she set her sights on a renowned magician, Caesar. After all, Magic and theft shared enough similarities for people to buy the story. So, being the master deceiver she was, the weasel easily earned Caesar's trust. Now, all that remained was to frame him for her countless crime. But as she was considering how to make her move, she noticed Caesar's aggrieved pupil, and a new thought entered her mind. Maybe I don't need to get my hands dirty. At her encouragement, Lorenzo tampered with Caesar's magic box, causing him to f afterwards. Lorenzo seized his master's property, and the weasel set about tarnishing Caesar's reputation. Two co-conspirators committed the perfect crime. <sighs> I've got to hand it to you. You're both exceptional storytellers. It's enough to make even me wonder whether there was really another mastermind behind all this. But I just have one question. You seem to think that I am the villain in this tale. What's brought this on, Linny? Don't worry, Lorenzo said, but I never believed that he was the weasel. And in fact, my investigation only made me more certain of that. He was too forthcoming with his confession. I mean, As W Thief didn't get caught, true. Was trying to hide. How disappointing. So you'd sooner trust Lorenzo than me? Even without a shred of evidence? 
A magician is an expert at playing the audience to get the result they want. And I have no doubt that you, Gemma, are equally talented in this regard. What the fuck is blowing up my phone? Oh, my friend's finally reacting to all my TikToks. With a little help from Lorenzo, you put on a very I thought that was convincing Facebook. performance. The lovesick fiance, whose devotion to her betrothed is unshakable, even under threats of violence. Caesar was maligned and hated by all for ten years, but you? Everyone sympathized with your who would suspect for one second that the lovely young lady always seen weeping in front of Caesar's grave was actually the mastermind behind his demise. No, not that poor lady. Wait, so you mean the whole intimidation thing was just a hoax? But <laughs> why would Lorenzo agree to that? And why didn't he sell her out even at the end instead of a... Yes, why indeed. Hmm. Maybe Gemma herself could enlighten us on that question. Well, Linny, if you are so confident in your version of events, then I think having killed Caesar with his own hands, Lorenzo was plagued by overwhelming guilt. Revealing the Phantom Weasel's true identity would serve no purpose. But if the Weasel remained free, then she could take care of Lorenzo's loved ones. An excellent answer. Though, sadly... Is that right? Well, don't let me bore you. If you'd care to change the topic to some... As a matter of fact, there's one thing I'd really like to... Why would the real weasel have targeted things that only have value to other people? Could you shed any... Of course. After all, we're just telling stories here. If I had to guess, I would say that the real weasel must have had a terror left to fend for herself after her parents died young. Betrayed. Scorned. Be She'd scrounge waste paper from garbage bins to draw on, using twigs and dirt for lack of ink and pen. This is wrong! This is wrong! It's just wrong! It's fucked! <laughs> Thank God there's subtitles. This was her only source of happiness in life. But it was all she needed. And she was content until the world decided that even this once again she was betrayed and this time everything was taken from her she felt like life was a miry pit that dragged her further down the more she struggled to escape at that tender age she should have been happy instead she stood in the shadows and watched with envy as all good this was a fate too cruel for anyone to bear her pain became a breeding ground for dark thoughts. Thoughts which festered and grew into a twisted solution to her troubles. God, seeing the Genshin character quest makes me like the companion quests in Star I Rail even more. the happiness oh. of others. In all, I will rob them of everything they hold to be good and true. And that's some pretty now it all makes does this story satisfy yes it is quite to my tastes thank you for helping to clear up my confusion huh that's right what drove you to write that letter Gemma? because without that none of this would have she didn't write the letter <sighs> after 10 long years i'd hoped that the phantom weasel would be consigned to the history books by now <sighs> but it seems like someone still wasn't ready to let her find linny or should I call you the phantom copycat now? You were the one who posted that letter outside the opera house. Bum, Very bum, bum. sharp, phantom weasel. Still is Well, no need for me to be coy about it. Our goal was to clear seat. The most straightforward way to change the public's impression of Caesar was to force the weasel to show themselves. Uh, that's it? You had no other agenda? Of course we did. We made it quite clear in the letter, I believe. I shall take from you that which you hold most dear, just as you did to me ten years ago. I like I like sinister Lenny. Ten years ago? You mean Caesar's death? You, uh, wait. Oh, I get it. You were those two obnoxious. Uh, you kids. still don't trust him? I mean, that which so is long, fair. And you're all grown up now. I didn't recognize you. Right. He taught you magic back then, didn't he? For what, ten days or something? 
and you went to all this trouble. Why? Because you feel like you still owe him something? Ten day, yeah, but the t Fatui, yeah, the Fatui is a slippery slope. Well, I feel like not everyone. Uh. Um, Columbina is hot, but that doesn't mean I don't trust her. Yeah, but um, not. I don't think everyone in Fatui is a would be a bad person. We remember all our debts, however great. Ten years ago, Caesar's reputation was torn to shreds and his legacy was thrown out. Ten years off, but we did not forget. And so... And what exactly did you take from me? I'm still standing, as you can... Free? <laughs> Caesar once told me that even though the world is filled with lies and falsehoods, we must find our own truth. They turn on the alder. Yeah, I think that applies to you too. Truth can take many forms: prized possessions with nostalgic value, fervent hopes and dreams. And Life took many things from you, and those wounds never healed. When they ached unbearably in the dead of night, stealing became your way of. No what are you trying to say? I'm saying that for the last ten years, you've been living a rather uneventful life. Perhaps that's because you found something other than a life of... Back to Lorenzo for a second. He murdered his own master, played along with your act, and took pains to make sure any suspicion would be directed towards him. But what... He knew who you were and the things you'd done, and despite that, he was willing to give everything up for your sake. He's the reason that you haven't felt the compulsion to steal in all... You're more than just accomplices in murder. You're the only real friends each other has. So I think you know, deep down, that he is the only truth. But that truth is gone now. And I guarantee you, you'll never see it again. But also the Fatui is such a huge organization that I feel like that some of them just don't know about what the others do. <laughs> Congratulations on your freedom, Gemma. Damn, that's cold. I Your love it. Freedom will cost you dearly. From now on, you'll be all alone in a world full of lies and falsehoods. I do hope you'll be able to bear it. You've still got a long life ahead of you after. Gather round, one and all. The time has now come for the amazing Linny to. I'm sure you're all wondering what he has planned for the grand finale. Well, wonder no more, for the answer is. A death-defying high-altitude escape. Surely know about what the Harbingers have done in Liyue? <laughs> I don't know if what Child did was actually public enough. A high-altitude escape? I'm sure you all remember the magician Caesar. This was the very trick that led to his fatal fall. So we have now learned that Caesar was wrongly accused. And that the real we guess that's my cue to leave. Whew. I've been practicing this one for ages. Now. Traveler, Paimon, I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. There may be a lot of people watching tonight, but you alone are my true witnesses. I know he did select that the Fatui may not talk about it, but it's surely spread res maybe. But do the residents even know that he did it? Like, they just know the god woke up, but they might have not known the reason. Lenny, wait. You two hid a lot from Caesar. He went to his grave without ever knowing your secrets. So what about now? Are you an open book? You don't have to tell lies to end up isolated and alone. One day... You'll end up exactly where I am today. Oh, this is spoilers back to look. Maybe then you'll find <laughs> Hi, Brendan. You're wrong. I'm nothing like you. Huh. And this is yeah, Lenny's so, story chapter quest. So, what are we at? Like Lenny said, when you're ready, let's head outside and we'll Wait, what about Gemma? She'll figure out what's best for her soon enough. Oh, and if you'd like to see Lenny after the show, you know where he'll be. Oh, Never mind, right. you can stay. <laughs> well, let's go and watch Lenny's finale then. Uh, this 
trick's a pretty dangerous one, but he should be able to pull... Yeah, like, I, I have been done with the story quest for quite a while. I'm just doing some extra stuff. I did the event. Like, the, uh... I did this event earlier, but it was a lot shorter than I thought. I'm just multi talk scene walk seeing you and Babu. Yeah, I saw he was live. Here, after the story quest, I'm going to watch the trailer for... Um, cloud retainer stuff, the character teaser, and also the trailer for Honkai Star Rail. I'm a mod, so I gotta behave. XP, oh no. Ooh, we get a cutscene. Magic should be mysterious, surprising, and defy logic. My magic sibling is trusts hard work. <laughs> Every single movement has to be practiced thousands of times. It's all right. We're used to that. Uh, ah! <laughs> oh, she's so cute. We're sorry. You've taught us so much. Same. I can't tell you the whole truth. <sighs> it's okay. Uh, Do you still remember what I told you? Uh, this world is full of lies and falsehoods. I only hope that one day... You can find your own truth. Yeah, it's basically like when they get you. What about you? Yeah. Have you true. found your truth? Magic is my truth. I want to perform a magic trick so great that people will always think of me when they talk about it. For a magician, what greater honor could there be? Look! Behold! Linny is sealed inside the box. Will he manage to escape? Ten years ago, Caesar attempted this very trick, and it was at this precise moment that... Uh, uh, Lenny! Watch out! I was so iconic at work. Mysterious. Yeah. Oh! Five star. Surprising. Oh, this is beautiful. What the fuck? Isn't that right? This honor belongs to you, Caesar. I'm just sorry it's a little late. he possibly have done that? How mysterious. I didn't blink once. He just vanished right in front of my... What a heart-stopping magic show. This was really worth the trip. For another free... Oh, that's pretty cool, Kumo. Caesar's name has finally been cleared, and Fontaine's new star magician, Linny, has fulfilled a wish on his behalf. Oh, I couldn't ask for a better grand right. finale. It will make a great headline for the Steambird tomorrow, even if I do say so myself. <sighs> Looks like everyone really loved Linny's grand finale. You know they don't know the full story. Linny doesn't <laughs> see Linny anywhere. Where'd he go? Genshin could never love us this way. Yeah, that's actually because the fun fact. That's actually something I learned. Um, the person in uh oh, fuck, what what is title? The guy that's kind of in charge of Genshin. He was in charge of one of the Honkai games who were who was stingy for their rewards apparently. And, um, he moved over from that Honkai game to, uh, Genshin. And the Honkai rewards started getting better after he left. Hmm. Maybe it's time he go to a different Hoyo game or maybe another place. show kind of seemed like Lenny's way of saying goodbye to Caesar. Saying his time he well, moved to like, I don't know. Alright, <laughs> let's go look for him there. And the person that got put in charge of has also put it. That would explain it. Uh, uh, America. <laughs> America Magia record. No 
no way we'll be able to see the stars tonight in this weather. Unless... I try making the stars appear anyway. So salty, I bought a VPN just to play fucking Magic oh Girl Gotcha. You didn't have to. You could have just not played it. But like the happiness I get is like... Oh, okay, that's fair. Does it have at least Madoka? When the chain broke, Paimon was sure that magic is a performance art. A magician has to get creative to keep the audience on tenterhooks. That's our job. So I tweaked Caesar's original setup a little to keep. I was honestly a little nervous during the live performance. The thought of falling, suddenly feeling weightless, seeing this. Sometimes I can't help but wonder what Caesar thought in those. Did he regret taking Gemma and Lorenzo on? Or did he believe that it was his own slip up right at You know, Paimon's been wanting to ask you about something ever since we were in Caesar's workshop. You learned magic from Caesar once. After I joined the House of the Hearth. To be honest, Lynette and I had an agenda when we approached him. I told you about my past before, remember? As a young boy, I survived by secretly learning magic from street performers. I'd watch their trick, but I quickly realized that observation alone could only get me so far. What I saw was the polished final performance, but the rigorous training they put in behind the scene. I needed to learn how to improve my sleight of hand, hone my misdirection skills, and make niftier. We were gifted enough that we'd made some progress by ourselves, but without proper guidance from a professional magician, we quickly plateaued. So that's why you sat. Yes. We figured there was no harm in asking, but it took us by surprise that in all, we only spent 10 short days together, but he was very good to us. By contrast, we hid so much. For instance, when he asked why I wanted to learn magic, I answered, but in truth, there was already a lot more to the story by then. After being taken in by an aristocrat for our magic talent, then betrayed soon after, this was no longer about me doing what I loved. What amazed me was how the lie escaped my lips even as I was hesitating over whether to tell him the truth. Trust is a beautiful thing. Sadly, I'd forgotten. Lenny. Still worried about the way I feel? <laughs> you really are a gentle soul. But don't worry, I'm used to it now. From the mansions of the elite to the house of the hearth, after Caesar went on tour, we became busy with our missions. The next we heard of him was that he'd fallen to his death and was now declared to be the phantom we that night i remembered his smile but as i lay there i didn't know what to say to keep secrets is to put up walls the longer you keep them up the less you let people in then one day you look around and realize your life is like an empty auditorium after a show Full of seats once occupied by all the people who left. <sighs> but I guess that's the price we have to pay. <laughs> you only realize how much someone really meant to you when you lose them completely. That's why I was so confident this would hurt Gemma. Because uh. I felt it for myself. I, I own, I'm not laughing at Lenny. I'm laughing at, at you two. Bre Brendan and Kuma, I'm laughing now to see what you guys talking about. <laughs> yeah, sure we've had to say our fair share of goodbyes during our journey, too. But whatever happens, Paimon always believes in what tomorrow brings. Delicious food, fun toys, and the traveler by my side. Paimon just needs to focus on things like this and all the unhappy stuff goes right out the window. Um, you know, traveler... Doesn't that kind of make you Paimon's truth? Exactly. It's the same for me and Lynette. We are the truest thing each other has. Life has taken plenty from us like it did from Gemma. But at least it left us with each other. That, that's why the darkness never consumed me and why it never will. Maybe we live in the shadows too, but we remember every precious ray of light that shines through. Oh, um, so what's next? They're gonna pull out the Keyblade. <laughs> All right. Time to lighten this conversation up a little. What did you think of the- It was amazing! Paimon 
just wishes we hadn't been so distracted with the Gemma situation. We spent most of our time in the Opera House just talking and pretty much missed the entire first half of the show. Um, Winnie, could you two just... Whoa, that's a bit of a tall order, I'm afraid. The show's just finished, so my sleeves are decide... Aw, come on! Surely you can think... Oh, all right then. I'll give it a go, but only be... Watch closely. I have a flower in my hand. You liar! There's nothing in your hand! We ain't going along... Huh? My goodness, you're right. But I could have sworn I brought one here with me. Hmm... Okay, try this. Count down with me. Three, two, one. Three, two, one! Now, have another look around. Maybe the flowers appeared somewhere else. Really? Let's see. Wow, there it is! Oh, this is a different flower from the last time, right? But more importantly... Hopefully I get Kafka. Well, if you want to learn magic, <laughs> you'll have to start by addressing me as teacher. Ugh. Fine. Please, teacher, please. <sighs> Since you asked so nicely, I'll share one little tip with you. Namely, the student of magic cannot solely rely on others being prepared to reveal their secrets. You have to observe, think, and find the answers for yourself. Joke's on you, I have like 16 tickets right now, and they keep going up because I haven't been grind- I, I've been- Well, not grinding, grinding, but um, like I've been doing like the little side stuff that have nothing to do with the main story quest so I could continue story quest on streams. Is that it? Ah, look at the time. We shouldn't linger here too long. Thanks again for coming to see my show. I look forward to seeing- <sighs> Alright, shall we head back down too? Oh, Paimon can't wait to read the Steambird. Let's head to the Steambird's offices tomorrow morning. Shall I send my cup? <laughs> I'm very Scalpel. sorry, Charlotte, but my sister and I are quite busy today. I'm afraid we'll have to decline he, this interview. Yeah, he did hard save for her since launch. Oh, please, Linny. I'll only take a moment of your time. If you would... Huh? What's happening here? I spent all night writing my piece about the Phantom Weasel, but just as dawn broke, I suddenly received news that Caesar's fiance Gemma, had contacted the guards and confessed to having been... That was quick. <clears throat> hmm? Too late, bro. <laughs> that was quick, you say. It sounds like I've got some catching up to do. <laughs> Whoops. Aha! Uh -huh. My instincts did not lead me astray. You do have something to hide. Gemma turning herself in must have something to do with... Maybe watching my high-altitude escape trick reminded her of a better time with Caesar, and she could no longer ignore the voice... Huh. Okay, then. Wait, no, 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 there must be more to it. If that's all it took for her to have a change of heart... How did it take her? Um. His brain red. <laughs> oh, I remember now. You and Gemma were nowhere to be found after quickfire question. Where did you all go after? Oh, we went to the cemetery and Linny did a private magic trick just for us. Actually, glad you mentioned it. Because that reminds Paimon, guess what? Linny started using rainbow rose. <coughs> what? Hmm. I don't recall ever having received a rainbow rose from you myself. Is this supposed to mean that they're more important to you? No, I, I just... What the... What now? Oh, did Paimon say something wrong again? Do you sort of wish we had more difficult mm, material missions? But I can't complain too much about how I... How... <laughs> the amount of punk I get. Seems like this interview wasn't meant to be. Well, forgive my persistence, but when there's explosive news waiting to be found, I can't turn away. The news about Gemma has already made... Apparently, one of the things she said to the guards was that her final wish is to see Lorenzo one last time. 
Oh, there's clearly a web of complicated relationships. All right, I guess I'll leave you to continue the... We need a Charlotte hangout event. Um, Lynette? Paimon didn't... <laughs> Don't worry, I wasn't angry. I was just trying to distract... Oh, really? Oh, thank you. You and me both, Paimon. You and me both. At least it did the... Please, take good care of that rainbow. I'd be really upset if you lost it. Aww. That was sweet. Yay, 60 primos. Hey, we're at 50 wishes now. Let's go. Okay, now we'll first... First, watch this. Huh? Yes, I did get my free five star. <laughs> A story about Master? Let me think. Hmm. Always like watching Master's these. Master's a great. <gasps> That's that bird we got as a when pet. When I was a child, she made all kinds of toys for me. <gasps> Gone you. <laughs> oh, fun fact. Like, Ganyu apparently used to be got super chubby as a kid that she actually... A monster ate her, right? And... and <laughs> the monster died because she was so chunky! It choked to death on her! <laughs> she quite <died> though. <laughs> I, were, I was hard Ganyu crazy and I don't ever use her hardly now that I have her. And it's... <laughs> Which I should fix. Too many characters to play. I have so many now. They were often too advanced for me. Oh, she's so but cute. They always showed me how much she cared. <laughs> she's so like. Hmm. Oh. You want to hear a story about Master? Master might say she likes peace and quiet, but she doesn't mind getting visitors on Mount Outsong. In truth, Big <laughs> she does get lonely if no one ever goes to see her. Cloud retainer, you say? Is that my... Qu <laughs> yes. Yes, I know a tale or two. I'm so happy she's becoming a playable character. There was a time when she preferred to appear in human form and was revered as a bold and decisive figure. Really? She's your Genshin Bayonetta. Hmm. Oh, Shen Ha, oh, my bad. Hmm. Yeah, that, but she was there too. You could have more than one queen. But no power trainer is Genshin <laughs> Bayo. <laughs> it is, he is. Speaks about one behind one's back. Gilf. <laughs> Not to worry. I'm sure you will have the chance to very soon. God, I love fucking. I, I love Song Lee's voice so much. Okay, now let's see. Kumo sent me this trailer for the Honkai. Planet of festivities. A cradle drowning in dreams. A haven for the cowardly. Oh. The family has summoned guests for its grand celebration. The golden blood will flow. What the from fuck the is destruction th as an offering to them? Children of the flame, this marks your rite of passage. Akash, I'm the Biblical angel? In your eyes and showed you music of the strings. Serenade the celebration and hush the harmony into muted awe. It will be done, Father. Oh, Do run. Oh. I set your form alight and taught you mastery of the blade. 
temper it with sulfur. Made the elation and let the performers' blood and tears pour I'm in so the confused. As you wish, Father. Katarina, I kindled a flame in your heart and grant. Katarina, this isn't gay. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't League of Legends. You blood of fire. Use your wrath to shatter the preservation sanctum and build their gold to create a statue of our savior. You got it, old man. And Constance at last. My most ambitious and exceptional child. There is nothing more to teach you. Just remember, without That's a any code, beautiful flower. Hour, strip away all they hold dear and leave naught but the remembrances too. She's a fucking flaming goat, <laughs> man. She won't be necessary. I can take them alone. Katarina, what the hell? A little pessimism might be wise. <gasps> oh, she is gorgeous. Who is this? What if we all end up dead? Oh my god, I'm in love with this character and I don't even know her. She reminds me of Albedo. That was constant. Since when have those on the path of destruction feared death? Ooh. Still, it is wise to plan ahead, father. What the fuck? What is our fallback if things become perilous? Fall back. Such a thing does not exist. Is that a scythe? Oh my god. Destruction is brave and heroic. To cling to life is to delay in cowardice. Relish Penacone, savor its invitation. The wraith is gone, bro. This beautiful dream to welcome its new master from Fedora. If it, Duke Inferno, ever flame Mansion. Yeah, I can see why. Dude, she's the one I want the most, but I also think Dubra, uh, the scythe? The scythe sells me. I mean, like, <laughs> anyone knows, scythes are my favorite weapons. Or at least some of them. I want the, all three women I want the most. Yeah, if I had to rank it, I'd rank... I want her, then her. These two are kind of caught in the middle. And he's dead last. I think that... Yeah, they all are all unique. Yeah, those... Dude, like, they're all awesome. Like, even though he's bottom of the barrel, but that doesn't mean he's not bad. Like, goddamn. I found the waifu. If you can follow... Oh, that's so cool. I'll give you a quick comparison. Kasha the Tuner, Dubra the Scribe, Constantine the Dyla, Katarina the Shacklebound. Those are their titles. Oh, it's like saying the weakest of Squad Zero is X Y Z. <laughs> There's still Squad Zero. Yes, exactly. As per our contract. Behold, my Coco Goat. Access denied. I never finished her. How far did I get her talents? Oh, I think around the time I got her, I started like backbreaking on Genshin a bit. Yes, I will. It looks gorgeous. The reason why I fell in love with this skin, um, or not the skin, this character is literally her burst. I don't know what it was, but her burst like spoke to me. The fuck? It's so beautiful. And I love the symbol on it. Like her little Adeptus form. Kmart Farina. <laughs> I 
I as my main Kumo. So Shenha is, yeah. Damn, it's already almost midnight. It is time for the session to end, because I do have work in the morning, sadly. Crap, now I kind of want to play Star Rail, and I blame you fuckers for it. <laughs> Lovingly, of course. Um, I mean, Nahida, so that opens up a lot of teams. Ooh. Team is... I mean, I planned to stream Star Rail. Uh, what day? I have it on my schedule. Uh... Oh, I never posted the schedule in the schedule tab. Okay, on Tuesday, I'm streaming Star Rail. I need to fix that. Hold on. I believe I didn't do that. Whoops. I bird before her true class reveal she was a healer. Huh? Time I found out she wasn't, she'd been gone. Oop. That's the worst feeling. Let's see, is there anyone who I can raid right now? Actually, there's like five different people I could raid. I could raid Dottie. I could raid Babu. I could raid Salt Queen. I could raid Lady Liz. Hmm. So I can raid either someone playing Diablo 4, someone playing Dead by Daylight, someone playing Lake, or Resident Evil 7 Bio, or PAL. What the fuck is PAL? Oh, wait, PAL is PAL World. Is this called PAL on Twitch? It just says pal, so I didn't know I didn't think it would be pal world. Oh yeah, I actually don't know if I've raided Dottie before. I've played games with her, but you know what, we're gonna raid her. And I can see what pal world is like. All right, but tomorrow we will be uh, doing the weekly retro stream, continuing Drakengard 2. And then Sunday I'll be doing a Party Animals Co. stream. Monday po would be Pokemon Unite. And Tuesday, Star Rail. Then Wednesday, Y'all Will Vote. And um, I allowed it. Fucking the auto mod. And then Wednesday. Uh, yeah. But yeah, this stuff. But anywho, I'll see y'all tomorrow for the weekly retro stream. Y'all take care. Have a good night. Let's say hi to Dottie. If you have any emotes that are from my channel, let us all use this or this. Your choice. Uh, all right. See y'all in a bit. <laughs>